go with their local ISP uh, and, and ask for the access uh, to sign the package or take a SIM card like that. Okay. So your ISP can provide you, uh, this is uh, say ISP, this is how ISP works. Uh. So this actually, let's say this is your ISP. Whatever how you, when you sign up the package to your ISP, actually, whether it's, it can be, this is the, what is this? This is the, the LTE, or you can say the mobile network antenna. Is your 3G, 4G, 5G is using this antenna. So it means you are signing up a mobile network. It's using SIM card. Huh? You use your phone to connect to this antenna, you can access the mobile network. Okay, this is your phone. At your home, you might be using this. Let's say this example, okay? In your phone, use your 5G, maybe nowadays the latest one is 5G to access the antenna. You can just connect to the ISP network, okay? So if you are using the MTN, MTN package, you are connected to MTN network. You are using GRO, you are connected to GRO network. Either it's wireless or wired. Okay, you also can sign a broadband package from your ISP. Then you they will pull a fiber optic cable into your house and then or inside the office. Then you will connect to a router. A router. A router will 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 have a Wi-Fi. If you your router has antenna, this is a home router. So we have an antenna and then you can, you can uh, release SSID, Wi-Fi signal. And then either your phone or your laptop can use the Wi-Fi to connect to the router. And then the purpose to connect to the router is actually just to connect back to your, e, to your ISP. Same, if you are using network cable to connect to the router from, from a desktop or from a laptop, same thing. Just connect to your to your uh, ISP. So right here, the important thing is here is either you are using mobile network or using Wi-Fi connect to the router using cable. The important thing is you just want to connect back to your ISP. Okay. You connect to the internet. It just means you connect to the, your, your ISP. So from your ISP, let's say this is your IS, uh, this is your ISP. You connect either using mobile or using uh, fiber. Okay, okay. Then the other, this one may be your another local ISP, or maybe this is uh, another country. Uh, another country's ISP. So this is actually the internet. <laughs> this is that, that's a simple example. Okay. Actually the internet is just connect all the ISP all around the world. Okay. Using fiber cables. So you need to connect all the ISP all around the world. So we can see that the from country to country, overseas, the distance will be very long. So that's why we have this. To connect to between countries, we are using this submarine cable. Uh, so where's Nigeria? Somewhere here. This is Kenya, Nigeria. Okay, you can see this is Nigeria. So from Nigeria, what do we have? We have a lot of points right here. Fiber, fiber optic cables connect to Brazil. Okay, connect to Botswana, South Africa, here, connect to Malaska, Tanzania, connect, 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 until here, keep on connect from country to country, Australia, this, actually Malaysia, Malaysia is somewhere inside here, okay, this is Malaysia, all right, so there are so many cables, huh? so connect, until China, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and then there are so many cables right here, you can see, so many cables, connect to USA, USA, so and the USA, you can see it here, the color, the brown color and the blue color cable, actually because the earth, the world is round, 
So on the other side, you come back to here. You go until here, so you come back from, from here. Okay, from here, you, you can, we are connected to um, this Venezuela. Okay, there are so many countries are here, United States, and then you are connected to Iceland, you are connected to European countries, and then connect back to Nigeria. Okay, so you can use fiber, which actually can let you to travel around the world. Okay, around the world. Very fast, huh? in seconds, milliseconds. Okay. Uh, so that's why, now, where we are, I'm in Malaysia. Okay, let me use another card. I'm in Malaysia. You are in Nigeria. We can talk to each other using this uh, Zoom meeting. So from here to here, okay? it's very fast, right? Okay. Uh, so this submarine cable. Submarine cable are all the fiber optic cables. Huh? It's a very high bandwidth. You can, you can send data very fast. So these are the maps huh? that connect all the ISP all around the world. So this is the, the internet. Actually, the internet. They are running on cables. Okay. So, another way is, can I use my router? I also can use my router to connect to a broadband. See, this broadband, you can plug this into it. This inside the broadband, you have a SIM card. This broadband, dongle, can plug into your laptop and then you also can use this to access the mobile, mobile network. Also, you can plug this dongle to your router, and your router can access to using the mobile uh, 5G, the 5G, 4, 3G, 4G, 5G to connect to the mobile network, connect to back to the ISP. So, regardless what method you use, either you are using wire or wireless, you just want to connect back to the ISP. That's all. Okay. Okay. So, connect to your ISP. Maybe you sign up for cash, you might have different bandwidth. Okay, I load 50 megabit per second or download 100 megabit per second, depending on the package you sign up. So, for your router to your ISP, mostly they are in uh, fiber. Okay. You know, there is Okay, so, so to connect to your router, you can use Wi Fi. Wi Fi, you have the frequencies 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Okay, and then for desktop, if you don't have the Wi Fi card, you can use UTP cable. Well, means your network cable, connect to your router. Okay, these are inside the home environment. Okay. So these are the UTP, unshaded twisted pair. We have CAT5, or mean category, category, or we short form call it CAT, CAT5E, CAT6, CAT7. Before that, we have CAT1, CAT2, CAT3, CAT5, but they are already obsolete, and we're no more using that because the bandwidth can support are too slower. Eh? So nowadays you are using this. Eh? CAT5E, you can start to support this. 1000 meg, 1000 megabit per second. This is. Sorry, if you're not, uh, not, you're not asking any question, please uh, um, mute your mic. Eh? If not, you will disturb the everyone. Eh? Thank you. Okay. Okay. So for twisted pair, you can the bandwidth supported have 10, uh, 10 meg, 100 meg, 1000 meg. 1000 meg means one, gig, one gigabit per second. Or you also can support up to 10 gigabit per second, but the distance uh, will be less than 55 meter. So if you are just supporting 10 meg, 100 meg, or 1000 meg, your max distance can go up to 100 meter. You, if you are using this type of cable. So these are the twisted pair. Okay, twisted pair means here there are four pairs or twisted pair. Okay, and then inside these are copper wires. 
So this we also call this a uh, electric cable. Okay, electric. And then these are the RJ45 connector. So this connector you crimp onto the the cable, you get this. These are the cable. Okay. So next distance, hundred meter. So if we so uh, we see the next one. Huh? So this is how you do the do it. Huh? So this is using the connector. This is what we use. Huh? You connect to your uh, to your PC or your to your laptop, and then you connect to the port on the wall or the switch. So this, uh, but these are the wall. Huh? On the wall, this is what you have. Huh? Using the same twisted pair cable, you connect to the jack. The jack connect to the ports. The, to the face, the wall plates, and then this is what you get. And then you plug your cable, plug in your cable onto the wall, the face plate, the ports. Huh? So behind the behind the wall, you will be directed to the, to a switch huh? or directed to your router. So next, you also can use this huh? to extend. Okay, if you are short, maybe you are less than hundred meter. Huh? Maybe you are just 10 meter, but you found that you just need to extend a little bit. You can use this. Okay. Coupler. Okay. Extend. Or this one is it's not functionable. Eh? If you see this device, one to two, one to three, nothing like this. Eh? It's not functional at all. Eh? So if you want to more, you if you just have one port right here, just one port, you want more ports, you can just use this, huh? use a switch. But later we'll see about that, huh? the switch. So we have this fiber optic. Okay, this is another one. Huh? If you want, want to support over 1 gig, 10 gig, 25 gig, 40, 100 gig, 400 gig, 800 gig. Very fast, right? This is the speed that the bandwidth can be supported by fiber optics. So these are the fiber the material, the fiber optics. So these are the wire with the connectors. Okay, this are example. So for fiber optics, uh, we have two modes, uh, two types of fiber optic cable. We have single mode. On the cable, on the on the label, uh, on the writing on the cable, you will read the message, uh, the words SM or multi-mode MM. Okay, between this, then you can know that. For the difference between single mode and multi mode is the distance. Let's see the distance. Single mode can, can travel further. Okay, you can see the distance uh, start from 2 km, 2 km until 40 km. How about the, for, the, for the UTP? 100 meter only, maximum. For this, one cable, you can, the, this, the, fur, the further distance start from. Uh, 2 km until 40 km. So, but using single mode, you can go up to 40 km further. Multi mode, shorter distance. These are difference. For bandwidth, single mode can go, uh, single mode can work further, but the downside is lower bandwidth. Even lower bandwidth, it still can support 10 gig, 25 gig. Okay. okay. So, lower bandwidth, but if you have shorter distance, you can support higher bandwidth. Why? Because the, when the light signal is traveled, the further it's traveled, the light attenuation uh, will uh, decrease the light signal. The light signal will be weakened. Uh, so when this light signal is weakened, uh, maybe you are traveling, traveling through the submarine cable, let's say the submarine cable, need to, the signal, the light signal has to uh, travel across the, the sea, uh, over sea. It's very far, further, far, far distance. Uh, so there will be a booster. Uh, between the from uh, point to point, there's a booster, okay, to boost up the light signal so that the light signal can be traveled further until the 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 ISP in another country. So the bandwidth and then next is a cost. Single mode because you can travel further, the cost is higher. Multi mode, shorter distance, but the cost is lower. Lower cost. So when do you want to use single mode? When you want to use multi modes? Okay, it's like this. If you want to connect from switch to switch inside building, inside your server room. Yes. Uh, please, can you allow us to record this class and keep it? Please? 
um, actually we are not allowed we, are, we cannot allow anyone to record this okay this is a Huawei security policy I my, me myself also cannot record this okay okay hmm. so cost is like this so in, if, uh, if you are inside building you use multi mode so because you doesn't need to travel very far but if you are using building to building from side to side very far far distance you use single mode okay mm, so these are the types of cable fiber cable you might see uh, this is aqua color yellow color orange color these are cable you commonly see okay and then these are the connector. These are just the four common types of connector. There are many, much more types of connector, but these are the four common ones. LC, SC, FC, ST. Okay, it can be one connector and then it can become in pairs. Okay, Come in pair, connected in pairs. Okay. So at your home, you mostly will see this subscriber connector. You subscribe a package for, with your ISP you see this, okay, yellow color, this SC connector, use in home. Okay, these are the router. This is the home router, the home router, this is the WAN port. This is where you connect to your ISP. This is WAN port, this is the LAN port. This is where you connect to your PC, your end devices. Okay, so let's see, this is how it works. Huh? For the ISP, Actually, it's like this. Huh? Okay, from your PC, you connect to LAN port. Any device you cannot con can connect to LAN port. And then this is the WAN port. WAN port is for you connect to outside to the public network. Means actually it means to your ISP. So this you still the blue color. I using a blue color line. Is this is a UTP cable? Okay, this is still UTP port. Okay. Connect to this. This is an OLT client. The purpose of this basically is just help you to convert the signal from UTP to fiber, fiber port. Using then I use the fiber straight connect to the ISP. Okay. So this cable mostly you will see this SC fiber optic cable. This is what we see before this. Huh? SC fiber optic cable. This one. Okay, and then end devices. These are the example end devices. It can be your laptop, your PC, desktop, can be a server, or it can be your uh, CCTV recorder, or any other, your, or your printer, network printer, or IP phone. Okay, so let's say this only, we only have four, four ports that here. I can only co connect four devices. If I want to increase the port numbers, but I, want, I need more ports to connect more devices, you can use switch. So these are the switches. You can extend to eight ports. You see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight ports, or 24 ports, or 48 ports. Okay. So this is how you connect. Ah, you can still, still connect to a server, or you can use a UTP cable, connect to a switch. Means that, this one of the port you use to connect to the router. You have now you have seven ports eh? you can connect to your end devices. Or if you are using this, 24 ports, you connect one to your router, you have still have 23 ports eh? for your devices. Or using 48 ports. One connect to the router, you you still have uh, you still have 47 ports eh? for your devices. So these are the options uh, being uh, available in the market. Okay, so you can either using this or you also can using this this method, this architecture uh, connections. So for the router, you have one connection, one connection only. Connect to a switch. So this switch can be a very high end switch, uh, high end switch. So for the high end switch, you can connect more switches onto this switch, high end switch, more switch. Uh, you connect to more switches. These switches, it can be a 24-port low-end switch, 
because you just want you just want to connect to N devices. Connect. Okay. And also, this also can connect back right, to your N devices also. Uh, so this is a good good architecture right? here. This is called a hierarchical architecture. Okay. What about this? Mm. You also can do like this. One port connect to one switch. From one switch, you connect to another. So another to another. Cascade, this is called cascades. It works, uh, this network will work, but we not recommended to do this uh, because it will cause a very uh, high congestion on your network. So because you can see, all the 20, 23 devices here need to compete for this bandwidth. And then this another one, another, another 22 compete here. This so which is the best? Yes. Which is the so best? Which? Yes. This is the best. Hierarchical. Okay, hierarchical is the best. Huh? You see, this is a high-end switch. This okay. for your connect to your device and device, you use a low end switch. Uh, this is the best. Uh, okay. So, uh, so this is before this. These are all the home home environment or home office. Now, in router and switching, KCI router and switching, we are learning how to uh, configure for enterprise network. So these are enterprise. These are the Huawei Enterprise Router. You can see the difference. Okay, so this is home router. It's a very small, very small router only. So, but this is a enterprise router. It's a very big steel box, steel casing. So this is one U, two U, three U. The height is different. The bigger the size means the more ports you can have, the more types of ports, the more features it has. Uh, you can support uh, one U, two U, three U. This enterprise router. Okay, and then these are the enterprise fixed switch. So these are the router. These are the switch for enterprise grid. For enterprise, the UTP ports. So they are UTP ports, same as the home home grid. But in the for the enterprise, we have this SFP ports. Uh, this SFP is used to connect fiber cables ah, fiber cable for first, more high-end switch eh, we have this ah, SFP ports all ports are SFP ports you can use fiber optic cable to connect out to all these ports ah. okay next this is fixed switch eh? this you cannot put in any clock any slot in any card for any further more ports or any slot this is fixed Okay, then this is chassis switch. Only enterprise have this chassis switch. Huh? This is 12U. It's a very high. Huh? The size is very big. Huh? This is 12U, 10U, 8U, 4U. Okay, the size. More ports you have. The, and uh, the higher the performance, the switching performance. So, why do we have this? Huh? Why not I just buy 10 of this? Why not I just, I just buy 10 of this thing? Instead of buying this, okay. Uh, so this is one switch. This is also considered one single switch, but with more ports. Uh, so actually, the best is if you need more ports, you get more, more. You get a bigger switch. Uh, more with more ports. Eh? Actually, this is uh, usually we will use this type of switch, chassis switch, eh? as a core switch. It will be your core layer. Okay. Means that this the okay. So this example eh? for enterprise network. Here I am just using a fiber fiber. This can be used in a small and medium enterprise. This switch. Also, or enough to be a core switch. Uh, okay, so for your access layer, where you connect to your all your end device, your CCTV, your PC, your 
IP phone your AP yeah? now access point. Before this, on the home router, your router is also your access point where you connect the Wi-Fi. But in the enterprise switch yeah, or enterprise router, you cannot. You can separate this uh, into different devices to provide the Wi-Fi signal. Okay, so the yellow color, all this yellow color is the fiber optic cable. So means that inside the enterprise, uh, we are different from home. Inside the enterprise, we may we may have server, we may have storage server. We will access the files, uh, the information, the files, the data inside the server. So when there is more traffic, uh, travel to the server to retrieve some data. A lot of data need to retrieve. So you might not only get only the, the ports on the server, you might need to support not, not just one gig, you might need 10 gig or 100 gig. Okay, so this can support, huh? about this can support, this switch can support, let's say 10 gig. So you can connect 10 gig, 10 gig. So all these are one gig. So the speed will be higher, the more use the user, the less congestion, the more soups move the traffic flow. Huh? Okay, so between here, you can see in home with just only one, one, uh, one cable connected to the switch, but here we can apply a technology. We can combine two links uh, to increase the bandwidth. Two, two cable, let's say if each cable is 10 gig, I combine two, I can get 10 to 20 gig. This is, an, uh, this is a technology called the link aggregation, uh, LACP, link aggregation mm -hmm. control protocol. This is a technology we will, we will learn uh, in this training on how to apply this to logically combine these two ports, uh, two links into a single link uh, so you get more bandwidth and more reliable. And then you can see this is another technology. Yeah, have three switch. They interconnect to each other. Okay, they interconnected to each other. Means that if this link break, uh, this two link break, I still can go to this way and access to the server or access to the internet. Uh, okay. So this is uh, another technology called the STP, Step Spanning Tree Protocol. And uh, here in this technology you apply is to prevent the loops of what happening in this kind of connections, uh, interconnected switch. So how, what is the STP? We'll see this in maybe in, uh, Wednesday, yeah? we'll see this topic. Okay, so inside the enterprise, this is your private network. Inside the enterprise, the speed may be very high. You can tank it port. You can use fiber optic. But when you're going out, just want to access the internet. Maybe you are still using that the UTP cable. Maybe just maximum one gig. Because it also depends on your the, the package and you subscribe with your ISP. Maybe you can only download 30 MB. Uh, so you don't need to use and uh, use the fiber optic, just use the UTP cable. So the purpose of the router is to help you to connect your private network to the internet. Okay, so the switch is to connect all your devices in your pri in your private network. Okay, from server to the switch to your end devices. So this is important in your private network. If you want to go out to internet, you use a router. This is the enterprise environment. Okay, okay last but not least, uh, the AP at here provide the Wi-Fi access. So this Wi-Fi access, this we call wireless LAN, uh, wireless local area network. This is another, uh, Huawei have, uh, another certification uh, for this wireless LAN. Uh. For what we learn in routing and switching, we learn how a uh, wired network. Wired network. Okay, so from this, you can see this, uh, connect to ISP. Uh. These are the, your ISP. Okay. These are all the client, the client, client. Okay, the client for the enterprise, your office, your company. So you use connect to the ISP network, connect to ISP network. Inside ISP network, 
there are more routers uh, inside the ISP network. Why? Maybe they want to, you want to direct your want to access from your private network, you access to the public, maybe you access to another side, another client side. Maybe that client side is actually a server providing some web services. Also can okay, you access. So the ISP will route everyone uh, to each other if according to the service provider. Uh. So instead of ISP, there are many more routers. Uh. So actually these are just the enterprise router. For ISP, we have the uh, carrier grade router. Is the carrier grade router is far more higher performance uh, and bigger the size. Uh. So, and the uh, cost, the price is also very high. Uh. Okay, so this inside the ISP network, they will use a protocol to route the routing, the traffic, how they route the traffic. There are some protocol to use. They are called the uh, OSPF. We also will learn this uh, later. Uh, in Thursday, we will see this why is OSPF. Why ISP use OSPF protocol? And then, oops. Okay. And then Balance. this one, you Balance. want to transfer, let's say this is my HQ, this is my branch. Balance. I will transfer my data over the public. If I transfer over the public, in my, my data might be uh, leaked. Some of my cache data, steal my data, cache. So they will know what I'm sending to my branch. So I want to make my data transmission uh, secure. So I can set up a VPN tunnel to my branch. So whatever I send to the tunnel is encrypted. Uh, so we also learn this, uh, we will learn the IPsec tunnel and the GRE tunnel. Okay, so that's all for this uh, short brief. Okay, so now let's take a 10 minutes break. Uh. Okay, before we continue. Okay, let's take a 10 minutes break. So let's continue at mm, So, can you can? Sorry, I'm a bit uh, confused uh, with the time, with your local time. Because uh, for now, I'm here is 5.29 for now. Okay, 10. Okay, 10. Okay. Yes, mm. mm. Israelite. How are you? Are you there? No, you too. Are they lose? We go, we go to hospital. Alpha, I never ask you. Alpha, I never ask you. The number one. Alpha, I don't go. They don't. They put the door. Don't do the wrong thing. For the house. Promise, please mute your microphone. Okay, okay, okay. 
Linda Okoi baka mini class ya. I see. Just now, I show you a, a architecture, a cascading architecture. You combine the switch to switch to switch to switch. It's a cascading, cascade uh, link connections. Huh? So, I not recommended to do that because it will decrease the performance of the entire network. If you want to optimize, uh, optimize the entire network, you need to understand uh, all the uh, technologies, the standards, the network communications, how, how devices, network devices communicates, uh, how their behavior, how they works, uh, all the concepts uh, and the principles you need to know so that you can build a uh, optimized network. Huh? So it's easy, uh, it's actually easy to build a, a network that works. Okay, that works. That's like a cascade. It works, but you want to build, it's not easy to build an optimized network. Uh, okay. So next. So in the objectives of this section is explaining what constitutes a network. Identify the basic components of a network and the primary mechanisms for communication over a network. So what is a network? Just a Two end station means two PC connect together using a physical media. It can be a wire cable, it can be a UTB cable, it can be a fiber optic cable. Also, okay. Two end station, PC to PC, laptop to laptop, is a network already. So the purpose of the network is for the devices to send data to another devices. Or for, or for the devices to receive data for any devices, just like that. So instead of you using the, your pen drive, uh, your flash thumb drive, to plug into your laptop and copy the file into your laptop and then pass the laptop to your colleagues and then he plug into his laptop and copy the paste, copy and the file into his laptop. It's very troublesome. This is local. What if you want to send a file to add to the to your colleagues or to your partners, business partner at another site and overseas, another country? Can you 
copy into a pen thumb drive. Okay, copy into a thumb drive, and then maybe you deliver it. You deliver it over. You put it into a a letter. Okay, and then send it using the DHL or send using the delivery service. It's not efficient, sir, and it takes a lot of time. So that's why we build a network, we build the internet, so that you can send your data, send your file over the internet to your partners, to your business partner, to your friends, to your colleagues in another side of the world. Okay. So this one network is to send data. Okay. Very efficient. Huh? So, okay. And then next. This topic is we talk about transmission media. We talk about cables. So this, before we had the UTP cable and the fiber optic cable, we had this uh, coaxial cable. So this coaxial cable, the speed is very slow. Uh, it's 10 meg only, 10 base. The number before the base is the uh, speed, uh, 10 meg, 10 meg. These are the thin and the thick coaxial. Thin coaxial can travel up to 185 meter. Thick coaxial can travel up to 500 meter. And then these are the connected and the, the B and C connector nowadays. Huh? So we uh, seldom see this one already. We, and we are no more using this type of cable and this connector in IP network, in today's network, no more. Huh? We are either using the UTP or the fiber optic. So these are the ethernet cable or we call the UTP cable. Huh? Okay, twisted pair, RJ45 connectors, or I already mentioned just now, 10 base, 100 base, 1000 base. These are the speeds. Maximum distance, all 100 meter. This is CAT345, CAT5, CAT5, CAT5E. See this, huh? you need to have, have at least CAT5E to run, to support, hard to, to support uh, this 1000 meg huh? speeds. 8000 meg means 1 gig, 1 gigabit. Okay, of course, later we have CAT6, CAT7, all that. Huh? Okay, if you want to, you want higher speed, huh? not higher speed, uh, higher bandwidth, actually, higher bandwidth, more than 10 gig. You want 100 gig, 400 gig, 800 gig. Yes, you, you have to use fiber. Nothing else, huh? you must use fiber. Okay. And then fiber, advantage of fiber is higher bandwidth compared with UTP. Fiber, higher bandwidth and further distance. You can travel 400 meter, 500 meter, 1 km, 2 km, until 40 km also. Okay. So it depends on the types of fiber cable you use and the connectors. Okay. This one. So, and then we have, this is uh, another form in, in another types of cable, we call it serial cable. Do we use this to, last time in, this is already a legacy, eh? we use this to, uh, to connect to the ISP. Means from your router, you want to connect to the ISP using this serial cable. Mm. So, so means that nowadays we are no more using this type of cable anymore. Okay, so serial signal data encoding, encoding this is just to tell how the signal, the signal being sent from PC to PC, from your device, and device to the switch, the switch to the switch, the switch to the router, the router to the ISP. How the data is transmitted? In 101010. So this is the uh, machine readable language, uh, 101010. Uh, Okay. So then collision domains. Hmm. So signals in a shared network are susceptible to collisions. A collision detection mechanism is used to identify collisions. So what we have collision here. So this architecture is actually we are using a very old architecture we are, when we are using coaxial cable to, to, for, to build the network. Uh, so, only when we are using coaxial cable, we have these hmm, collision domains. Huh? Okay, so this is the theory side. Huh? 
So what, why, why, why do we have collision load? Maybe because the coaxial cable is half duplex mode. Uh, means it can go two way, but only one way at a time. Okay, here already shown in the example, this PC want to send a signal, send data. This PC also want to send data. In the end, they crash, collisions. So when they collisions, the signal is corrupted, exaggerated, and the signal will affect everyone. Affect everyone because the signal is crashed. Okay, so in order to reduce the collision rate, we have this a collision detection mechanism is introduced. So the name of this collision detection mechanism is called CSNA slash CD. So the full name is Carrier Sense Multi Access okay, slash Collision Detection Detections. So this guy, this mechanism can use to detect the collisions and then reduce the collision. Okay, remember, just reduce the collision. It doesn't 100% solve the issue. Uh, okay, so what are the steps? Huh? Steps they take. Huh? So all the PC that connect using coaxial cable, they have these steps when they want to forward data. So first step, they will listen. Listen before sending. Okay. So if the they listen, if no one is sending using the if no one is using the network, they start to send. Send. Okay. And then if there is a collision happen, collision. This collision happen. So they will stop, back off. Ah. So they will send a back off signal. Collision, send back off signal to tell everyone. To tell everyone inside the same network, collision happened. Stop sending. Okay. And then what? Start a random timer. Start a random timer. Each of the devices are here. Let's say they, they is, here I have all device. Let's say I start a random timer. Collision happen. Everyone stop, stop sending. Everyone start a random timer. Maybe this two seconds, this three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Okay, start to count down. Who is the first one? Will be first one to count down to zero. This one. Huh? So this will count one, two. One zero. So because the other is still count down huh? three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. So so repeat. You can say repeat. Step. One repeat from step one. Ah. Okay. So I count down. Whoever the first one to count finish countdown, they go back to step one. Listen. Okay. Because the other PC are still listening, no one sending. The, the PC is li listen to the network, no one sending, so start to send. Yeah. Start to send and then all the other PC that finish their uh, countdown. They will listen, listen to the network. Oh, because there's a PC already sending the sending data, so they stop sending, they hold on, they hold. Uh, so this is you have to reduce the collision collision rate, uh, the rate of collisions. But it, it cannot uh, totally reduce uh, totally uh, eliminate the collision because the timer is random. Let's say if this guy is two seconds. This guy also two seconds. The problem is here. Both PC count down. Two, one, zero. Okay. 
first, both also start this search, eh? nobody using the network. So both also start to send. When both also start to send, there will be collisions. So this is CS and ACD. So come from here now. So as I mentioned, coaxial cable is using half duplex. Half duplex, you can go two way, uh, one way at a time. Uh, so that's why you have collisions. For full duplex is two way at the same time. This is what we have today. Eh? Your UTB cable, your fiber optic cable are full duplex. So that you don't have collisions. Eh? Uh, so, summary, which form of the cabling can be used to support gigabit Ethernet transmission within an enterprise? So, the answer is, according to the slide, it will be at least five, Cat5e, five eh? Cat5e. And you can Cat6, Cat7. Uh, so, what is a collision domains? The collision domains is a, is a network, it's a shared domain. So, where only one PC can access network at one time. Okay. So what's the purpose of the CSMACD? To reduce the rate of collisions. So, oops. So, uh, notations, clear. Okay. So these are the first uh, uh, short chapter for the first topic. So, do you have any question on this? Oops. Hmm. So, no questions, so I will just continue. So now we are into the new topic, huh? Ethernet framing. Uh, now we're talking frames. So what is frame? Uh, let's see. So transmission over a physical medium. That's how we see one end device to one end device connect using a cable, a physical medium. So transmission over a physical media require rules that define the communication behavior. So the management of the folding behavior of Ethernet-based networks. Internet-based networks means you are using coaxial, but now there's no more, no, no, no one are using coaxial anymore. So we are consider the network. If you are using the okay, in the network you are using UTP cable, using fiber optic cable, you are Ethernet-based networks. Okay, is control. So this type of network is controlled through the IEEE X02 standards. Eh? Defined for Ethernet data link technology. So you need to have a fundamental knowledge of this standard. So you need to understand this so that you can understand how the link layer communication is achieved within Ethernet based network. So we learn, uh, let's say, just now we see one PC send, well, a PC want to send a uh, data to a PC using a UTP cable, let's say UTP cable. So what are the protocol? How they send? Can, can the PC just simply send 101010? Can the, the other side, the PC and the other side, can he understand? Why he can understand? Because they are talking the same language, means using the same protocol. Sending and receive, they understand each other because they work under the same protocol. So we learn what other protocol is. So objective. Explain the applications of reference model to networks. Okay, reference network. Here we are meaning the OSI seven layers and the TCP/IP models. Okay, and then we'll describe how frames are constructed. Uh, because in Ethernet network, we are sending frames. 
and then I will explain the functions of MAC addressing at the data link layer. So in this chapter, we are looking at data link layer. And then I will describe the Ethernet frame folding and the processing behavior. Okay, next. So in managing a network communications, uh, we need some protocols. So in LANs, local area network, we have I3P X02.3.3. And we also have Ethernet. So for WAN, we have PVP and HDRC. These are the same layer, the protocol on the data link layer. So we have these four. Uh, PVP and HDRC is for us to connect to the WAN, connect to ISP using PVP or HDRC for last time. Nowadays, we have another types. Huh? Later, we also will see this in the, uh, maybe uh, Friday. Uh, maybe Friday or next week, we'll see the WAN technologies. Huh? So now, we are looking at IEEE X02.3 and Ethernet. Okay, so TCP IP, OSI, Novell, and IBM. Okay, who are these four? Okay. I start with Novell. Okay, Novell is the first, it's a very old company. So this is a company that introduced uh, the very first network operating system. What is it? Operating system for network devices. Like your PC, your PC you have Windows 7, you have Windows 8, Windows 10. You also have a Mac OS, you also can have Linux. All, the, all these other, Mm. and device uh, uh, operating system okay but for network devices router switch all these are also just like a PC eh, but they are provide network communications eh, services so they have their own network operating system so this novel create the very first network operating system we call netware Okay, so but NetWare nowadays no one using it anymore. So for your Windows 10, you also already have a network operating system module built inside your the Windows. So and then IBM, uh, IBM is a very big company. Uh. So IBM last time he they introduced the first uh, network protocols. Okay, how the that's, like, that's not what I mentioned. How to PC send data over the medium. How the switch to PC to switch, switch to the router, all the network devices, how they communicate, what are the protocols. Eh? So IBM created the first protocol, but these protocols only can be used by IBM products. If you want to, if you already buy a IBM solutions, IBM equipments, you cannot buy another um, buy the equipment for another vendor anymore because they cannot compatible. So, because there yeah, are more and more vendors that come up with their own products. So, they might be, uh, so we need a way, a standards for them for, to get all these vendors to build the thing, build their devices, to, to manufacture their devices, using the set of framework, the standards, uh, so that and the, all the devices from different vendors can compatible, can exist, can coexist in the same network. So for standard, we had the, we had the ISO, the International Organization, the International Standard Organization, the ISO, introduced this uh, OSI model. So OSI model, it looks like this. This is the OSI model. Another one is the TCP IP model. This is introduced by the US uh, Department of Defense. Uh. Nowadays, everyone uses this. Both, uh, actually both. So this is TCP IP is a model. So application, we have application layer, transport layer, network layer, and the network interface layer. So this is just to, this layer, all this layer is to explain what is, is happening uh, inside when you send, want to send the data, what happened to your data when it's sending over the network? Okay, and then we see that because in each layer there are different, uh, different actions that need to be taken on the on your data to process the data. Okay, 
So this is four layer. If you want to look at more details, we further separate this uh, application layer into three layer. We call application layer, presentation layer, and session layer. So these all are the same. Okay. Most basically, application means this is the layer that most nearer to the human, means the end user. This can because as I give an example, your Google Chrome, eh? your Google Chrome will in charge of these three layers: application layer, presentation layer, and session layer. And then your uh, maybe your cards, your Wi-Fi card, your, your network interface card will in charge for the transport layer, network layer, and the data link layer. Uh, so uh, last one, the physical layer means the, the cables, okay? Mm. So all the vendors build their devices based on same framework, same standards. So they can coexist. So now in this chapter, we are looking at this data link layer. This is the link layer we talk about MAC address. So what is MAC address? Yeah, later, huh? So let's see what's encapsulation first. Huh? So when your data, let's say this is your, uh, let's say a uh, Google Chrome. Let's say you try to access the data. So it says to google.com, www.google.com, you send a request. Send a request. Huh? So your request is your data. Your data passed through the, is passed to the, from the application layer. Okay, so what we talk about the, uh, the application layer, let's make a, uh, till the concept clear is here. So application layer, we talk about protocols or what are the protocols uh, in application layer. They are the service, uh, HTTP, HTTPS, um, let's say uh, for email, SMTP, for file, FTP, file transfer, you also can have SSH, Remote, uh, remote access to server or network devices. You also can have telnet. Uh, you also can have domain name server. DHCP, mm, DHCP service, and many more applications, uh, protocol. Okay, presentation layer is to uh, convert, to convert your data, all this, uh, all the data into into a form uh, that can be transmitted over the network. Okay, and then session layer is to set up a session because both sides need to set up a session on both sides because you, you want to send data. You need to t tell the other side, the receiving side, tell hey, I want to send data to you, please. You both set up a sessions. Okay, and then we come to this. Uh, this data is also still Inside the Google Chrome, the Google Chrome passes the data to transport the means your uh, Wi-Fi, your network cards. So the data for the session layers, it will tell the transport layer of what port to be used or what protocol to be used. Either it can be TCP ports, TCP or UDP, and we talk about port number. Okay. Port numbers means that for different type of services, the session layer will ask the transport layer to put in the different port numbers. So for HTTP, we have the um, port 80. Okay, TCP port 80 is HTTP. HTTPS we have 443. SMTP is 25. FTP is 21 and 20. 21 for control and 20, 20 for uh, uh, data. SSH is 22, Telnet is 23. Again, for DNS and DLCP, okay. Have their different port numbers. Hmm. Okay, and then network layer. Then the, this thing, uh, at this stage, uh, because this data already being encapsulated with a new header, maybe a TCP header, or UDP header. And inside this header, you mention the source 
port number and the destination port number. Okay, from what port number to what port number. Okay, so this in this stage, uh, we call this as the segment. So this is a segment, and then this segment is passed to the next layer, the network layer. In this layer, we talk about the IP address. So IP address. And here we put the source IP address from who? If you have my PC, want to send, send the data to another PC, maybe to the server. Oh. So let's say if for, if for Google Chrome, for Google Chrome I, want, I want to access uh, google.com, my IP address, I will put my source, my IP address, the source IP address onto as a, the IP header. Okay, and then who I want to send to the google.com, Google server IP address, the destination. Just like you're sending a parcel. When you're sending a parcel, you fill in the form, you write the from who, from where, your home address. Then to who, to where, okay, your, your destinations, you send. This is the addresses. So it means that this address is mostly used for when you want to send uh, from different, from one network to another network. Means that you want to send, uh, for more common scenario is you want to send the data, send the data to the internet. Uh, you need an IP address. So let's say if you just want to send the data, in the link layer, inside your own network, inside your house, network, inside your private land, private network, you can just have the data link layer. Okay, means that yes, here we talk about map address. Uh, data link layer, we talk about map address. So, okay, in here, in the network layer, we call this packet. And then here we call this a frame. Uh, so this is how a frame is formed. Huh? From data encapsulate with a TCP or UDP header become a segment, and then encapsulate with an IP header become a packet, and then encapsulate with, with a uh, Ethernet header and the FCS. The frame check sequence. Uh, this is just to check the integrity of this frame. Okay, this I think encapsulate, encapsulate with this. This become a frame. So this is how the frame is formed. So my address, if I send it work, I use my source my address and then that's use the receiving side as my address as a destination my address. And I send to the receiving side. Okay. And then physical. Uh, all this the frame is sent through the cable in physically 101010 set up. So communication between two and station, this is a very private network very simple network, just two end device connect with your cable. This is a, we consider, this is a, um, a local, a local network, a LAN, inside the same LAN. So inside the same LAN, the data, or this is actually the, the data combined with TCP header and combined with IP header. So at front and here is the Ethernet header and the trailer is the FCS, the frame check sequence. So frame format, there are two, two formats for the frame. One we call Ethernet 2 format, and another one is IEEE 802.3 formats. Okay, so both, either both format, we have the source and destination map address. Source and destination map address means send from who to who, who to who, okay? Uh, so, and then, for Ethernet 2 format, we have a type. Uh, type value at here will show up. If the type value is greater or equal to 1536, means this is a Ethernet 2 header, Ethernet 2 frame. Huh? If the, I said here is a length, huh? the length, same, same, uh, same field, huh? same position, it's about the length, the length is less than or equal to 1005, this frame is using IEEE 802.3 format. 
Uh, these two, let's compare. Okay, so these two, they are standards. You cannot configure this thing. You cannot change. Let's say for some communication, I want to change the type. No, it's not for up for you to change. Uh. It just it will change based on what services you want to do. Uh. So you just choose what service you want to do, and then, then you send. So this will change accordingly, uh, automatically uh, encapsulated by the uh, network device cards. Okay, and then next one, uh, let's look at the Ethernet 2 frame. Okay, Ethernet, for Ethernet 2 frame, for the destination Mac, is 6 byte, the size 6 byte, the source Mac also 6 byte. Okay, main Mac address is, for each of all the devices, the Mac address is 6 byte. And then next field is two byte for the type. So for the type is the type show at here is I to X zero zero means that this data should be passed to IP protocol means the internet protocol to process this data. If the type shows X zero six means this data should pass to ARP protocol to be processed. Uh, so that's to define. So IP is at layer three, network layer. ARP is at layer two, because ARP doesn't have IP. Later we'll see this. So, so you have to remember all this. A zero zero is IP for either type, either type, and for A zero six is ARP. So next is for ITP A zero two dot three format. You can see it here, actually the type is inside the snap. Okay, the type is here. So this type, for STP, the type is three. So please remember, this will be coming out in the exam, three. So that's now I said here, you can read here, the length also can, the type here also can, it's the same. So when the length is less than 1,500, Sorry, please. Can I, can I have a can I have a look at the um, previous slide? Yes, this one. This one. Can. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This this okay. Yes. I just want to compare the difference. Okay, compare the difference. Can I compare here. Can I see the difference. No, not this. Not not this one. Are you want to see the inside here? This one. This this one. Yeah, that's. I to be here, this one and the previous one. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually yeah. after you download the training material, uh, the training material is actually the same thing what I show you here. Uh, all the slides will be inside the training material, exactly the same. Uh, okay, so I can continue. Uh. Okay, so for frame forwarding, host A want to send data to host B. So for destination address, I should put host A should put the MAC address of host B as the destination MAC address. And the MAC address of host A as the source MAC address. Source from who? Destination to who? Okay, so right here there's a MAC address. You can see there's a typing mistake here, but never mind. Uh, the theory is host B will be the destination MAC address. Host A is the, the uh, source MAC address. So MAC address, MAC, Media Access Control Addressing, MAC address. Facilitate data link layer communications. Uh, put inside the same network, all the PC, all the end devices inside the same network, they must know each other uh, the their uh, MAC address, huh? so that they, so that they can send data to the device in the same network. Okay, so what is a MAC address? Huh? This is how MAC address looks like. Huh? It's a forty-eight bits. So it's forty-eight bits. Then you split to half. The first twenty-four bits is the OUI. Organizationally unique identifier. The last 24 bit is the some random 
and we can see the batch number assigned by each organization. So for MAC address, so the first 24 byte will show that, let's say in for your phone, your phone, your phone Wi-Fi cards, or your, for your laptop Wi-Fi card, or your, for the network interface card, they have their own MAC address. And this MAC address uh, should be universally unique. Uh, means that it won't repeat, uh, it won't repeat. All device have the unique MAC address. Okay, so it means by checking on the first 24 bit, you can know what are the, who are the manufacturer of your uh, network device. Uh. Okay. Let's say I open the command prompt. Type IP conflict, conflict slash all. I will check what is my, let's say this is my wireless LAN Wi-Fi adapter. Uh, this is a physical address, means the main address. I copy this. Okay, then I try to search. Huh? Net vendor lookup. So, yeah, many more um, websites uh, that can provide this service uh, to help you to search based on your uh, main address. They tell you who is your manufacturer. So, I paste my main address at here. So, it tell is Intel my new my network interface card um, or my Wi-Fi card uh, manufacturer is the Intel. Okay, it's Intel. Mm. So you also can do this uh, when you are free. Okay, you try to check your own. Next. So inside the broadcast, or we call the internet, internet network, kind of using the MAC address. Okay. So we have three types of frame forwarding. Eh? One, first one, unicast, means sent from one PC to one PC. Okay, one to one forwarding, unicast. So how to identify what is the uh, unicast frame? Eh? Means the, uh, the frame is sent from one uh, source from one, one device, destination to one device. It's based on the what you put, what is the MAC address uh, you put onto the destination MAC address field. Uh, right here, destination MAC address field. See, uh, the first field, uh, the destination MAC address. Depend on what MAC address you put inside here, you will, will determine is the folding is unicast, uh, broadcast or multicast. So, you check the destination MAC address. The bit number eight, huh? one, two, three, four. The first seven bit means one zero one zero one zero. The bit number eight is zero. So this means uh, this frame is a unicast frame, same for one to one. This also means that all the MAC address uh, for your end devices is uh, either your laptop, your phone, means I mean the Wi-Fi card and the network interface cards. They have their MAC address with bit number eight is zero is confirmed huh? okay and then if you want to send to all send to everyone okay you can put the destination MAC address as ff 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 all this mean in you convert to binary means all one 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 all one this is a broadcast frame means send to everyone Okay, why in this, this, uh, in this, the, the scenario of show and here is using a coaxial cable. Because when you're sending a coaxial cable, the coaxial cable was, it's like a water pipe. Right? Whatever you send out, right, it will flow to everyone. It will flow to everyone. So the host A send, B, C, and D, check the frame. He, uh, Receive the frame and then check check the destination MAC address. He because they need to know to who this uh, this frame is sending to. So you check it. Eh? The destination MAC let's say host B. Now host B 
First, we check the destination MAC address A. The destination MAC address is same as mine. My host B MAC address same means that this is for me. So I accept, I receive, accept, discard. Uh, I discard the, uh, the Ethernet header because I already know this is for me. So I continue to further process the, the packet. Okay. And then at this side, okay. Host C also receive the frame, but when host C read the destination MAC address on the frame, okay, this is not me, so it means that's for, not for me, so I discard. Same for host D, also discard. So this is unicast, but in the, in the broadcast, host C is a broadcast, so host C, see this, oh, FF, FF, FF. okay, receive, accept. Post B receive check. Okay, all FF. Okay, means for everyone, I accept. Same to post D. It receive check or it's a broadcast for everyone. So I accept to further process the uh, packet. So I say even though you don't you want to send to one to a group, one okay, let's say your face, let's say your WhatsApp group. Huh? Maybe now we are in the group, I sending. One to you all, you whoever inside the WhatsApp group will receive my message because you're inside the group. Uh, it's a concept. So I uh, here host A send out a multicast, and then only host B who are waiting for this multicast frame. Uh, means the you see the destination means host B look at the destination map. Rest you know that oh, I'm waiting for this, so I will receive accept. For host C also the same, receive and access. Maybe for host C, it doesn't waiting uh, for this kind of frame. So it does uh, discard. So it means that this is multicast. You only want to send the, send the data to certain group of users, a group of users, not everyone. You use multicast. On multicast, the bits, uh, the destination MAC address at the first few, the bit number eight huh, is one. Okay, for unicast is zero. For one uh, is for multicast is one. So it means all your network and devices huh, will not have this uh, MAC address huh, with the last with the bit number eight one. Huh? No. Huh? Okay, then carrier sends. We already seen in the previous slide. Host C is send, send send data. The data also that's like a pipe, huh? I flow, flow to everyone. So host A also listening. Hey, listen, hey, someone is using. So I hold on. So as the after time go, I keep on listen, listen, listen. No one using the network is quiet. Can start to send data. Okay, maybe I also want to send to host C only, not B. Uh, so there's the example. So carrier sends to reduce the collision rate. So frame processing. Host A send this. Uh, this is the data. This is the uh, not sure about this. This is the type. Uh, the type field shows eighty. Next is the uh, source MAC address from host A. Host A MAC address is inside this source. This MAC address field. Next is the end, uh, the destination MAC address. Means this will be the host B MAC address. Okay, and calculate this become a frame. So this frame will be forwarded to host B. So host B check. Destination MAC address, yes, it's me. Accept. Receive. Discard. Okay. Discard, discard. Means this one. Discard the Ethernet header. So this one. This type uh, will show that the first header of here is who. Okay, means that according to this, I mentioned this, that this data will be forward to that protocol. Maybe it's the IP protocol, maybe it's the ARP protocol. Okay. Uh, so mostly you will see is IP protocol, Ethernet 2. Uh, uh, no, the Ethernet 2 is discarded. Uh, it's like this uh, discarded. So in here, 
uh, one part the it have an IP header, and the other part is the data. Okay, next summary. How does Ethernet determine the protocol to which a process frame should be delivered? So, how does the uh, Ethernet determine the protocol to which a process frame should be delivered? So, how how the Ethernet like Ethernet how the data link layer no uh? Okay, I received this frame. I checked the MAC address. How I know that? This data, okay, this packet, uh, send to who? Okay, send to who? Send to the next layer or send to the next layer, the IP header, the IP address to, to check, to process, or, or other, any other protocol can use. Uh. So it really all depends on this, uh, the type. Okay, I already mentioned many times the route or the PC means. Uh, Okay, so it means the your network device, uh, network interface card or your Wi-Fi card will determine this. Uh. They will check. Okay, this is the uh, the type. Okay, based on the type, I know that if this is a eight zero zero, the eight zero zero. So this means that the next header is IP header. So this whole thing, this packet should be passed to IP to process. Later we'll see the Wireshark capturing and we'll see what's in, actually inside a, a, a packet or a frame looks like. Okay, let's see uh, later. So how is it determined whether a frame should be processed or discard upon being received by an end device? So when I receive, when the, when the host receive or in the end device receive the frame the first one the first thing he will check is the destination MAC address so you need to know who is this I check the destination MAC address same as me I receive and I receive then I accept I accept then I continue to process if different okay I will discard I see right, the next destination MAC address is not for me so I discard. So I discard it. I discard the frame. Okay, so thank you. So this is what we see. Eh? Okay, so let's see. Hmm. Frame. Let's see this. I just open one shot. Let's just see how is the frame looks like. Okay, so this is the example of a frame. Let me take one. This, ah, I don't want. So, who is this? Ah? Or oh, just take someone who I know. Let's say I want to ping. I want to ping my gateway. So, IP config. I know my gateway now is for my internet, for my wire cable, wire network is 10.11254. So I should I try to ping 10.1.1.254. I see something here. Okay. 
So I see MP is a protocol to do the ping. Uh, and here, so this is my uh, ten one one eighty six. Uh, this one. Let's see. What is my IP address? My IP address is ten one one eighty six. So this is my gateway ten one one two five four. So my gateway and my and my laptop is inside the same network. It's like this one. Huh? Gateway is a is gateway actually is the is a device, huh? the IP that you want to communicate, you want to pass if you want to communicate with a with a PC or the end device in another network. Means you want to leave this network, sending something out of this network, you have to go to the gateway. So now I'm 10186, I try to ping ping request, means I say hello to my gateway. 10 or 1, 2, 5, 4. I just send, I just send a ping request with Ethernet 2 format, source from Quanta Co. This is my, this is my uh, laptop IP uh, MAC address. It's a 6 byte. Right, huh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Destination to PC engine. Okay. Underscore 34, 31, B4 means this is whole thing. Eh? 0, 0, 0, DB9434, 21, B4. So this is my firewall because my firewall in the, in the server room is my gateway. So I ping, so this is A. Okay. So destination, uh, this is showing at a proper listing. Uh. So destination again, PC engine, source. So this is the Ethernet header. Uh, all the, the device receive the frame will check this destination MAC address. Is it for me? Okay. After I check destination MAC is, is for me, and I continue to check the IPv4. Uh, no, I continue to check the type uh, actually. Type. The type may be IPv4. If this is IPv4 means the next header is IPv4 means that this uh, this packet because here and then here is the packet so this packet will be sent to over to someone according to the type IPv4 uh, so let's say in IP for let's say we have uh, so in, in the MAC for MAC address we only see this uh, okay here also said that so destination bit number eight is zero is a uh, individual addresses unicast okay, individual unicast address oh okay all these are zero you're doing unicast So next one, because here type says IPv4, next header is IPv4. So these are the IPv4 header information. Huh? So this we'll see this uh, later. Okay. And then protocol number. This protocol number will show that what is the next header. Now is protocol is one. One means ICMP. This is the uh, next chapter. next topic we'll see this so for now we look into the IP address so why we don't we want to have the IP address is because we want to access to another network from my network from my local network I want to access to another network either is another private network or is the internet. Internet means it's another network. Uh. Uh, so make no difference. It's, it's the same thing. Uh. Uh. So let's see what is uh, IP address. Hmm. 
So the internet protocol is designed to provide a means for internet work. Uh, okay. The IP, uh, IP address, uh, your IP address is actually the IP means internet protocol. Under this internet protocol, they provide some of the combination of numbers. The numbers we are called the address. I so full name is called the IP address. So it's designed to provide a means for internet work communications. They are not supported by lower layer protocols such as Ethernet. Because if you're just using Ethernet, you cannot go out to another network. It means you cannot access the internet. So we want to send and receive traffic between two different networks, you must have IP address. So the implementation of logical addressing IP address is logical means that depends on which now we connect to your IP address might change okay but your main address uh, will not change no matter where you are okay let's say your phone in your universities maybe you connect to the to the, the campus the Wi-Fi so maybe you will get a IP address 1011 10.1.1 or something Okay, but your MAC address is still the same. Okay, when you but when you go home, you might get the IP address one nine two the one six eight one or something. But your MAC address is still the same. So no matter no matter where you are, the MAC address is still the same. But your IP address may change. Okay, so the implementation of logical IP IP addressing enable the internet protocol to be employed by other protocol for the forwarding of data in the form of packets between nodes. So you need to have a strong knowledge of IP addressing for the for the effective network design along with a clear familiarity of the protocol behavior. Uh, so you also need to have a clear understanding of the implementation of IP as route protocol. Now, when you do routing, uh, like the OSPF, or the static routes, you know, OSPF, when you route the traffic from one traffic to another, from one network to another network, uh, you must know IP address so that you can do, you can configure the routing protocol. So later we'll see. Uh, so in this uh, objective, I will explain the fields and the characteristics within an IP address. Just now we see this one. IP, uh, this, all this, uh, oops, this one, this is the IP header, everything, I'll explain each, each of these uh, one by one. And then we'll distinguish, uh, try to differentiate between public IP, private IP, and special IP. Okay, IP address, uh, which are so many numbers, so uh, we separate them into public, private, and special. And then we will try to do some calculations. Uh, we try to implement VLSM addressing. So uh, we try to do some uh, IP, try to allocate IP, a range of IP address according to different size of network you want to cater. And then I will explain the functions of an IP gateway. For IP gateway, just now I already mentioned, right? If you want to, for one network, you want to access to another network, you must send your frame, send your frame to the gateway. Okay, then the gateway will check the IP address, the destination IP address, and forward to the correct next, uh, correct next part, uh, next neighbor. Next hop. So, IP gateway. So next header processing. Continue for the last line. Uh, we receive a frame. You will see the, the the end device will see the destination MAC address, the source MAC address, and the type. So the type will show that show a number zero eight zero zero means that the next this one this data should be passed to IP to process the internet protocol to process because only this IP will understand the the very first header here only he will understand IP okay 
So the, how big is the size of the packet IP, the IP header? At least 20 bytes, okay? At most, 60 bytes. Okay, at least 20 bytes means all the information, yeah, all the basic information. So the extra 40 bytes is the IP options. Mostly we don't use these uh, IP options. So our focus is on the fixed message header. The fixed 20 bytes that must be must be uh, exist. Okay, so here at the version, the header length, the DS field, total length, identification, flex, and firm offset. Uh, TTL, time to leave, protocol, data checksum, there's nothing at here, and it's for header checksum, it's how to check the header, the integrity of the header. Um, important thing here is the source IP address, destination IP address, from who to who, from, which is from where to where, from what, uh, from where to where addresses. And then IP option doesn't uh, not important here. So we jump to the Wireshark. So the first one, version 0, 1, 0, 0. What What's mean by this? Uh? In this is a binary form. You convert to decimal form. This is four. Means this is an IPv4. So the IP address we are actually talking about. Uh, let's say one nine two the one is the one or something dot dot dot. Uh, this is uh, we're talking about. IPv4 address. Uh, so to say here the most important thing actually is a uh, source and destination IP address. So IPv4 version 4 header length. You see the size of the header at least 20 bytes. Uh, here I already showed 20 bytes. DS field, differentiated service field. This you can see the DSCP. Uh, the SC zero okay six bit of this is actually for the QS uh, quality of service maybe some packet need to be it's more urgent the router will forward this packet first instead of the other okay mm. so explicit congestion notification not easy and capable transport okay if zero means don't drop this in in the case of uh, congestion but we are not using this much yeah? so now what we we don't learn how to configure the QoS on route on this IA routing and switching but the exam will come out this one 6 uh, B uh, this DSC differentiated services code point so one two three four five six six B means how many number can this uh, six bit can be sure. This will be asked inside the exam. Uh. Six bit is how many? From what to what? Decimal number from what to what? Okay, this is this is me to find out. Uh. Yes, see. So total length sixty. Total length means the header include the the data. So identification, the flat and the fragment of set these three. Is for the fragmentation. Okay, fragmentation because a packet when sending from router to router, they might be need to uh, further further um, uh, the fragment ties uh, to smaller fragments, uh, chop to divide to several smaller fragments and then send over. Okay, because this is the issue with the uh, setting on the maximum transmission unit of uh, of different network devices on the ports. Eh? Okay. So this three is together. And then time to leave. Okay, TTL value. Okay, by, by default, TTL is um, 8 bits. 8 bits means uh, the maximum TTL is uh, 255. Uh, maximum 255. But by default, uh, Windows uh, TTL is 128. Uh, time to list, later we'll see what is this. And then protocol, again, protocol, this is to show who should process the next header, the next data, the, the, the data. It's the next one is ICMP. Okay, for, for internet, for internet header, I have a type. Types show that next one is IPv4. In IPv4 header, 
they have a protocol ICMP, what means the next one is ICMP protocol. Okay, then the checksum just for the uh, integration integrations. So integrity data, integrity, just check. Eh? So last one, most important, source and destination address must correct. So ICMP header, you can see this are the ICMP header. ICMP header type A code zero is the ping request. Okay, for ping reply, you can see this is a type zero code zero header. We'll see about this. So this is twenty bytes. Huh? Remember, this is twenty bytes. Okay, at least twenty bytes. And the option side is maximum 40 bytes huh, for the IP options, 40 bytes for IP options. Remember, remember this. Okay. So before we go into this IP addressing, I think we can take a, a 10 minute break. Huh? Okay, let's take a 10 minute break. So do, do you have any questions you can ask now? You may ask if any questions.
Okay. So let's continue. So now, IP address. Hmm. So this is an IP an example of a very common IP address we see. Eh? 192.168.1.1. So this is actually a private IP address. So maybe inside your office, inside your home, you see this IP address. 192.168.1 or something. Okay, dot one dot one dot one dot two. Okay, so so this is a decimal form. This is what we read. One nine two one six eight dot one dot one. But in machine for routers for your uh, PC or for the switch, they read this eh? <laughs> binary form. One nine two you convert to binary is. 11000000. One six eight convert to binary form is one zero one zero one zero zero zero. One you convert to binary form eight bits. Huh? One is zero 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 one. One convert same. Huh? Zero 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 one. So total and IP address is have. 32 bits. Okay, this is a fix already. You cannot change. 32 bits or IP address. With 8 bits separate by a dot dot dot. Okay. So binary is the base number system used for IP addressing. Okay. So the IP address can identify networks and the hosts. Uh, so host means that host inside the same network have the same network address. So in here, for example, here this is using a color to tell you okay 192.168.1 is the network bits. The, the blue color is the host bit. Means the first 24 bit is the uh, network bits. The last 24 is the host bits. Also means that for all the hosts inside the same network, we have the same network bits, but different host bits. Uh, yeah. So IP address, it, network address. Okay. So network address and broadcast address. So we have two addresses here. Need to need to uh, remember. So network address is the first IP in the network. Broadcast address is the last IP in the network. Both this, the first and the last, is reserved. You cannot assign this or you cannot configure this onto your end devices. Either it's your router, your switch. Nothing, eh? you cannot configure this uh, because this all the because all the all the network devices, uh, all the hosts inside the same network will share this, uh, will have the same network addresses. This is to show that oh, where am I? Okay. So and all the router, all the network devices, including the router and the switch, uh, who, who are using the same network address, uh, same network, they have the they will automatically know that oh I am inside this network 192.168.1.0 okay and my broadcast address is 192.168.1.255 okay later we'll see uh, how they use this uh, network address this network address will use this when we see this again in uh, where when, when we want to configure IP static route static routes uh, in routing protocol. Huh? So, and then broadcast later, we'll see this also. So, first and the last. Okay, how to determine the IP address is the first IP? This, when your, let's say, uh, host the network bits. Network bits never change. Network bits never change inside the same network. 
by the host bit. If your all your host bit is zero, means this is the first first IP address uh, inside the network. Means this is a network address, the first IP. So the next one is plus one dot one. Next one dot two dot three dot four dot five dot six until the last one is when all your zero turn into one. Means you turn all your zero into one. All your host bit is one. It's the maximum of the, of the last last one, the last IP already. Eh? You cannot add one. Eh? One more cannot. The last one. So this is two point five. Okay. When your the theory is when your host B, when all your host B is one, this is a broadcast address. Okay, you see all this one, then you convert the, this one, one 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 back to decimal. You get two point five. When this all the host bit is zero, you get zero 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 zero. You convert back to decimal, you get zero. Uh, okay, so that's decimal, binary, and hexadecimal. This three format is the very common numbering system uh, used in IP networks. For binary, we use for this. Uh, IPv4. Okay, so but uh, in uh, binary the IPv4, and this decimal is actually what we human write. Yeah, when we configure, it's also it's, we actually we are using the decimal form. So when do we use hexadecimal? We saw the MAC address. Okay, we saw the MAC address. We are using the hexadecimal, and then uh, also IPv6. Uh, IPv6 address, we are also using hexadecimal. So binary only has, is base 2. Base 2 means we only have two numbers, 0 and 1. Okay, 0 and 1. Decimal is base 10. We have 10 numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 numbers. Okay. Hexadecimal, we have base 16, 16 numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. So, binary and hexadecimal, number, uh, hexadecimal form uh, are the common numbering system used within IP networks. Okay, so what we need to learn at here is you need to convert between binary and decimal and uh, uh, hexadecimal between these all three. Uh. This three four you need to can you need to how to convert okay from decimal to binary to bin from binary to hexadecimal. This is how you convert. You actually this is uh, the best practice uh, how you convert. You always convert from decimal to binary, from binary to hexadecimal. This will be easier. And also you always convert from hexadecimal back to binary, then only back to decimal. Hmm. So this is a sequence. Huh? So for zero, I say on zero, decimal zero, decimal zero. I say I just use bin. Okay. Binary is also zero. Okay, can I write like this? Zero, also zero. Zero, also zero. Zero, still a zero, correct? Huh? You can zero, 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 zero. Let me just put a space right here. So these are eight zeros. Uh, and then, how you want to convert to hexadecimal? Uh, so this zero you convert to binary. So and then hexadecimal, you see these are zero. Four bits, uh, four bits of binary means uh, one hexadecimal number. So this is zero. All are zero. You you look for the last one. Uh, but, but for binary. For the ISP address, you actually can just look at 4-bit, 4-bit. Uh, okay. 
So for the actually for the more more best practices, you look for the last. This is you look for the last uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is zero. One, two, three, four. This is zero. Okay. So this is how you get V0. Okay, now you're doing some more something more special. Let's see. Maximum. I want one six nine. So convert to binary. Anyone know the answer? It's one six nine convert to binary. So any help can I get from this? This is the help, this is the table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight bits. So this eight bits, each of these bits uh, represent this one number, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, one, two, eight. So anyone know how to convert okay. from decimal to binary? Anyone can try, okay? You can uh, post the answer in the WhatsApp group. Okay. okay, so since no one is uh, answering, so I just continue to uh, review the answer. So how to do this is check. Let's say basically you still have eight bits. So we we'll start from the first one. So you see, if this is one, means that you add this. One, two, eight. Okay. So, oh, Abdul Malik, you have post the answer for me. Okay. One, zero. You post one, zero, one, zero. One, zero, zero, one. Ah, this is the answer. Let's check. Ah, that's what I said. Ah. This is, the, is this the answer? So the first one, you see this, the first zero, the first is one, you take one, two, eight, plus. Next one, if you, you take this one, you plus 64. If one, two, eight, plus 64, it will become one, nine, two, already exit, what's next one, six, nine. So you, know, you don't need 64, you put zero. Next one, 32, do you need 32? One two eight plus thirty two one six t yes, not exceed one six nine yet. So we need this. So one six t. So next one sixteen. Do you need this? One six t plus sixteen is one seven six or oh, exceed. You no need zero. Okay. So next one. Do you need eight? One six t plus eight. One sixty plus eight is one six eight. Eh? No, I see it. So we need this. Okay. Then one six eight versus one six nine. You only need one more. Means that you don't need eight. You don't need four. You don't don't need two. But you need one. And put one. Yes. So congratulations for to Abdul Malik. You get the correct answer. Okay. So now for this, 
convert to hexadecimal number. So again, you convert four bit, four bit. This four bit to one hexadecimal number. This four bit to one hexadecimal number. So what is this? So in hexadecimal number, you look from here. Still the same same uh, same methods, but this time for binary this is one two four eight. 16, 32, 64, 1 to 8. But for hexadecimal, you look at this. 1, 2, 4, 8. 1, 2, 4, 8. Uh, so now we have 2 and 8. So 8 plus 2 is 10. So 10 in hexadecimal means 8. Okay. So another one. One zero zero eight. One plus eight nine. So a nine. Okay, you can look from here. Here, this answer also. Mm, a. Uh, what is 10? 10 is A. See, 1010 is A. All the list already here. So you always can refer to this. Huh? I refer. You refer the last four bit. Okay, means the second number. Hexadecimal. Okay, one zero zero one nine. One 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 one. One plus two plus four plus eight. Sixteen. I don't know it's fifteen. Eh? It's fifteen. Means F. Okay. That's why you can see this. One 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 one. Plus with one 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 is two f. Okay. So let's try one more before we proceed. Okay, decimal. Um, let's see. One. No. Um, one three five. Give me a binary, give me the hex. You get me both huh? binary and the hex.
Okay. Okay, A B. You get me the answer is one zero 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 one 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 and zero B. You get me this zero one 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 and then you get me zero B. So is this the correct answer? Okay, let's see. Yeah? Let me use your answer to do it. So first one, you take this. So this is 128 plus 4. 128 plus 4 is 132. Okay, 132. 132 plus 2, 134. 134 plus 1, 135. Yes, this is correct. Mm. Okay. But for this, uh, why is 0 B? Is this 0? Is this. B. This is eight. Okay. So this is eight, correct? Oh, this one, one, two, four, correct. Yes. Now to validate, you are correct, huh? Eighty seven. Okay. So, so that's all. This uh, you can do it uh, more frequent, huh? If you want to get more familiar with this. So you just have to remember all this. This only you, you have to remember. This table. Okay. Actually, it's just zero until fifteen. And then for here is zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. So for this one, two, four, eight. Also need to remember this one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one, two, eight. That's all you need. Because the biggest number in the IP address will be show is 255. So it won't be more than 255. Eh? Hmm. So binary conversion, this one, the same thing. Eh? So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 2 power 6 means 64. 2 power 7 means 1, 2, 8. Eh? So in, the exam won't ask about this. Huh? You just have to remember this. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8. Okay. So, IP address. How many IP address we have, huh, actually? We have IP address. The number is up from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 until 255.255.255.255. What is this mean? Huh? This means your zero. Oh, oh, let me delete it. Much more easier to see.
So this is the smallest number. All zero. All bits, all 32 bits are zero. This is the first. Zero, 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 zero. The last is all bits are one. This is the maximum number, the max number and IP address at uh, 32 bits. Binary can show. Uh. 255, 255, 255, 255, 255, all one. Okay. So, in all these numbers, uh, we can classify them. Okay, we classify them for different purposes. So, there's a table at here IP address classes. Let's see. So for this IP address, this is a class ABC. So what do you mean by here class ABC is, uh, is the range, right? It's actually start from 1.0.0.0 until 126.255.255.255. These are class A. You just remember this, huh? class A. Okay, for class A, the first eight bits is I mean the, the, the first bit that is zero. The first bit is zero. So for class B, you start from 128.1. Actually, you can say you start from 128.0.0.0. It's uh, much more easier to remember. Until 191.255.255.255. Okay. And then uh, this is the first bit. is one zero. Okay. Either you are set for one two eight or one nine one. The first two bit is one zero. Okay, if, if your first three bit start with one one zero, see that huh? you are starting from one nine two dot zero dot zero dot zero until two two three dot two five five dot two five five dot two five five. Okay, these are class C. Okay, class A B C is somewhat is the address IP address you can assign to the uh, network devices you can configure to your PC, to your laptop, to your router, to your switch. Okay. But not class D and E. Eh? For class D is uh, uh, reserved for multicast. Okay, your multicast address. This is a multicast address. Huh? This means you want to send a multicast packet. It means to send to a group. Same like the same like the uh, the uh, internet, the MAC address. Huh? In it in my address you have unicast, multicast, broadcast. Same in IP address, you also can have unicast, uh, multicast, broadcast in IP. Uh, so multicast address is start with 224.0.0.0 until 239.255.255.255. So multicast mostly is used for routing protocol, used by routing protocol to send protocol packets. Or you, if you have you, you will, if the net, inside the network there's a multicast service like IGMP, PIM, okay, uh, or MLD, uh, yes, uh, uh, MLD is IPv6. Uh, right? IGMP and PIM is a multicast multicast technology for IPv4. So we uh, use this uh, multicast. But for multicast address. Uh, how to configure this, we will learn in professional level, not in IA level. And then last one, class C is start with 240.0.0.0 until 255.255.255.254. Okay, for me, yeah. it's experimental. This is for the R&D. Yeah. They, when they want to develop a new routing protocol, they might take the range, yeah, IP from this range to all doing experiment. Okay to testing, okay? And then, so A, B, C, and D. So you can notice that some of the IP address is missing. Eh? Where is 0 .0 .0 .0 .0? where is 0.0.0.0? Where is 127? It's 126. Then jump to 128. Where is 127? And then, where is last one? 255, 255, 255, 255. 255. 
after this plus one, this two five is not inside the class E. Eh? It's a the other special. Eh? Okay, here. Special addresses. So we look at the bottom one, the bottom table. Eh? Special addresses. 127.0.0.0 until 127.255.255. This is what diagnostic means that you can ping yourself. If you adhere uh, command prompt, you ping space 127.0.0.1 means that you ping yourself. Huh? You, you can use this to test whether your network, network adapter is working fine or not. Uh, okay, or, or if or for um, developers, huh? maybe application developer, they like to use this 127. Uh, this is actually means a local host. Okay. And then 0, 0, 0, 0 means any network. Uh, when you do this for the for routing, this means any network. Or 0, 0, 0, 0 means any network. If somehow uh, when, uh, when a PC or when a device uh, do not have IP address, it's also will be show will show 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, but that, 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 that one is mean no IP address, MP. Nothing. Right here means zero. Okay, there are the, the slightly difference. Huh? Okay, and then the last one, the very last one, two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five five is the universal broadcast. Okay, so remember, huh? universal broadcast. Why would I do say? Because inside each network, huh, they have their own broadcast address. Okay means that if inside this network, this host is the host inside this network, 192.168.1, you want to broadcast using this 192.168.1.255, okay, only the, the host inside the same broadcast domain, means inside the same LAN, will receive and process, eh? will receive and accept. Okay, but if you use 255.255.255, universal broadcast means the host are from different uh, hosts from different different LAN or different broadcast domain also will accept. Okay. But well, nowadays uh, we seldom see the usage of the we'll see this 2.5.2.2.255, but we'll not seldom see the a broadcast packet uh, is being forwarded to another broadcast domain to another LAN. No, I seldom see this because the router will block the broadcast packet, okay? So, but in last time, uh, when we are connecting all the PC, uh, when we don't have router, we don't have uh, devices and router and switch, uh, we, we don't physically uh, separate them, uh, separate the network. We connect everyone every together, okay? Using the same coaxial cable. Again, uh, this is a coaxial, uh, everyone is connected together. So you can see that this is 192.161.1.1, this is dot one dot two means that this is same network. This dot two dot one dot one dot two dot two the same network, another network, but they call they what in because this is a coaxial, it's a shared network. What host B send, it will flow to host D, also flow to host A, also to host C. Because this is a shared network. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, this is a shared network. So, you see, uh, 192.160.1.0. For host A and host B, uh, host B and host D, this is their network address. For host A and host C, this is their network address. So, how they know that? What is my network address? If I just give in the IP address 192.168.2.1, eh? what is my network address? How, I, how, how can I compare myself? I then I know what my network address? No. When we configure IP address, we compulsory, my include with a subnet mask. So this is compulsory. Eh? You configure IP address 192.168.1, then dot zero. This uh, host uh, maybe is dot one. But what is your sub, uh, until where? I mean, until where? is your network bits is and they wish be okay means that always is like this huh? the left is the 
never beats the right is a whole speed. Okay. So either you can start from here. Start from here or start from here. I don't care. Don't care. So subnet mask is the indicator. Okay. Start from the first one. One 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 until here. Behind here all are zero. So this indicator. All the one indicate that all these are sub is the network bits. The rest with zero are host bits. So depending on how you set this, uh, you can change the number right here. Okay. Let me try to demonstrate. So let me let me use back this one. One nine two dot one six eight dot one dot zero. So the net will be one dot one. one, one. Okay, and then that now I want to determine until where is the network bits. Okay, let's say I want I always start from the first one. You can always determine uh, until the number beats, beats, beats. So I can say until here. Okay, then the rest zero. Okay, so this is how you the uh, set the subnet mask. You cannot say that oh, okay one one zero some somehow okay, between in middle of here zero, no such thing. Eh? Always one one one. One until until your your desire until according to your network design. So one. Okay. So how to set where is this submit mask? This is binary form. Convert to uh decimal form, but you configure the IP address you need to config type the decimal form, right? So it's two five five dot two five five dot zero dot zero. So this is your host speed. All behind is your host speed. Eh? Means that you have had many host speed. Means that inside this network, this is a very big network. Eh? You can have right, your uh, IP address range eh, is very big eh, in this network. So so means that the more network bits you have, eh, the less, the smaller your network bits, the, your, your, uh, the less your host speed means the less is your, the smaller is your uh, IP range. So, means, but also means that you have more networks and more subnet. Later we'll see this when you're doing uh, VLSN. Okay, I also can change, uh, if I change to this, one, one, one. Zero. Okay, how about this? This is also can, uh, it's a subnet mask. Huh? So, this is how much? Okay. So this is two two four. So this is also can be used eh? two two four. So this is just to indicate that the Sunday mass is to indicate that all the position. The subnet mask is one. All these are the the here are the network bits. So how many network bits is here? So eight bit, sixteen bit, uh, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So nineteen bits network bits. Uh, nineteen bits. The rest nineteen. Mm, Thirteen. Uh, 13 host bits. So sometimes we also call this is slash 19. That means 
the first 19 bits is the network bits. So default subnet must and before this uh, we look at here. But I forgot about this. Uh. Okay. Private address range, uh, class ABC. So for class ABC at here, as I say I can assign this to uh, to uh, to devices. But these devices, all these the uh, address at here might be uh, limit or limitation. Uh. If, so if this if, uh, if because in this world uh, we have a lot of new devices, uh, this all this if you just straight use all the IP addresses uh, here, uh, IPv4, uh, okay, it's not enough. Uh. So we take some range uh, from class A, class B, and class C. Each of these class we take a range of IP address. We make it become a private address range. Okay, private address range. So this private address. Uh, these three class of ABC for private address, uh, this three range can be reused in different network, different sites. Uh. Okay, means 10.0.0.0 until 10.255.255. .0 .0 .0 .0. This class A. Let's see. Uh. So class B is 172.16.0.0 until 172.31.255.255. Class C is the mode we mostly see this, uh, commonly see this. 192.168.0.0 and day 192.168.255.255. Okay. So any IP in this range uh, will not appear in the public network. Okay. Okay. Come to look at. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, back to this example. So, this is your router. Your router. This is your private network. Inside here, you can always reuse the private address. Private IP address. Okay. Private IP address. Ah, reuse. So, but when you have to go out, to the ISP, or you may go to the public network, uh, you have to undergo a network address translation to translate from private IP address to public IP address so that you can access the internet. To go, means the ISP, it means the internet, uh, the public IP address. Okay, because we have these translations, means that because public IP is unique, eh? in public, public IP, only one device eh, can use the, what the, the public IP is unique, you cannot reuse, eh? because we only have one public network. Uh, only have one public network. So, all ISP, they are all using public IP. Okay, behind here, in your private network, in your private network, you can use, you can reuse the pi private IP. Eh? Means that right here, you use the 192.168.1.0. And right here, you also can use like the 192.168.1.0. It's okay. Because when you're going out, when you're going out to the public, okay, you still have to go through the NAT, Network Address Translation. So this we, we will learn this uh, maybe uh, next week. So NAT, translate you to a uh, public IP. Okay, maybe you can be um, 12.0.0.1. So uh, here it will be translated to a different, uh, maybe 13.0.0.1. So public IP is confirmed unique eh, inside the public network. So we can have many private networks reuse the same private IPs, but only have one public network. 
and you cannot reuse a uh, public IP in different device. Uh, okay, so what you don't see in private IP, uh, let's say uh, class ABC, uh, class ABC, class ABC, this is what you don't see in private IP range. Okay, they are all public IP. Okay, so that's all. Mm -hmm. So default subnet marks, huh? by default, I say class AIP, by default, the default subnet mark is 255, means the first eight bits is never bits. So also means slash eight. Okay, class B, 255.255, means the first 16 bits is never bits. Broadcast C is the first 24 bits is network bits by default, means slash 24. So this is what we usually see at this 255.255.255.0. Okay. So address planning. So what you need to know here is you need to know how to I give you a IP address. I give you a subnet mask. Then you can get you can find the you must be able to find the Network address, the broadcast address, and the I, the range of valid host IP, valid host IP address. Okay. What do you mean by here? Let me take this uh, question as an example. Okay, let's continue. Nine two one six eight one dot seven. Okay, I give you an IP address. So, so again, the, the theory is, if I just give an IP address, you cannot you 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 cannot identify what is the uh. Network address. What is the uh, what kind of address huh? you cannot identify. So I must give you a subnet mask. Dot zero. Okay, I just copy the same thing. Huh? So I know that, oh, so this is my mm, subnet mask. So I know that. So 255 means this is fixed. 255, this is fixed. 255, this is fixed. So for my network address, I know that. I just turn all my uh, network bits, uh, host bit to zero, this will be my network address. So, one, two, seven, seven. So, seven is zero, 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 zero. Zero, one, one, one. Okay. So, I know that uh, from here, I know that this, this first 24 bits are uh, no change, uh, no change. So, I convert the last one, the last eight bit to uh, the seven to the to eight bits. So I know that it's because this zero, this means all behind uh, uh, the last eight bit is the host bit. So now I see my host bit. Eh? My host bit is not all zero or not all one. Uh. So I now I know that this one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot seven is a usable host IP. Okay, this IP can be assigned to device, to network device. Uh, so, so in order to get, in order to get my, what is my host address, uh, network address? I need to change all my host bit to zero. Then I will get my host network address. Huh? So zero, 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 zero. So this is convert to, convert to decimal, this is zero. So this is my network address. So what is my broadcast address? So again, it bits. So the last of all the host speed. I turn all the host speed to one. 
this is then I convert this one 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 is two by five. So this is my broadcast address. So we call this BA broadcast address short form uh, network address. So usable IP. Okay. Or how many? How how to, how can you answer this? How many you server IP? Okay, answer this one. How many you server IP? I give an example. Huh? So how do you calculate this? Huh? It's actually two power the number of your host bit. So from here we have eight host bit. Okay, two power eight. Equal to two by six. Okay, two by six is the total IP, including the network address and broadcast address. So it to minus two for network address and broadcast address. The first one and last one minus, then you get two five four. So yeah, two five four usable IP, and then the range is the range. You start from one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot. You just take your network address plus one zero plus one one until one nine two dot one six eight dot one because this is network address. You just copy yeah, dot one. Take your broadcast address minus one two five five minus one two five four. So this is your uh, user IP range. Okay, yeah, two hundred and fifty four address can be used uh, inside this uh, network. Okay, so this is another example. So using this. Please uh, get me this. Uh. Use this IP address and this name mask. Please find me the network address, broadcast address, how many, how many user by IP, and what is the range, user by IP range. Let me put it here. This four, okay. Okay, I let me I give you three minutes. Huh? Three minutes. Hmm. No, actually two minutes is enough. Huh? Okay. Huh? So we I will review the answer at let's say fifty nine. Huh? Okay. Twelve twelve fifty nine. No, it's one time.
Okay, so I start to do it now. You'll be the answer. Okay, so it's a very, this is actually a very easy question. Huh? So you know that 255, 255, 0, 0, dot 0. Huh? So means that the first 16 bit, the first 16 bit is the negative bits. The last 16 bit is the host bit. So you know that 172.16 remain. All your host bit turn to zero it is zero dot zero. This is your network address. One seven two dot one six. So turn all your host bit to one it is two five five dot two five five. So how many user by IP? Two power. How many host bit you have? Sixteen. So you equal to six five five three six. So you minus two, minus two for network address and broadcast address, you get six, five, five, six, five, five, three, four. Hmm. Okay, so range 172.16.0.1 until 172.16, no, dot one six, huh? correct, dot, Two five five dot two five four. Okay, so that's all. This is a very easy question, sir. So next one, addressing limitation. Now we are going to uh, VLSM uh, network design using the four subnet mask uh, result in address wastage one. Because you see, one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot zero slash twenty four. How many address you have here is in this range you can have 254 user by IP address. But inside this network, you only need 30 hosts, means 30 user by IP address. Means the extra 224 is wasted, not using waste. And if you are inside right here, 192.168.2.0, same thing, eh? 20 hosts, wasted 234. IP address and there's 10 hosts. Uh, you wasted 244 IP address wasted. So can I cater? Can I just use 192.168.1.0? I give uh, I use this network, this default subnet mask that we are with default subnet mask uh, 192.168.1.0 slash 24. I create sub-network, huh? sub-network from this network. So we implement VLSM, variable length subnet mask. Huh? Variable. Means the, the, the subnet mask huh? can be changed, variable can be changed. Okay, so you have to cater for 30 hosts, 
20 hosts and 10 hosts. Means if you use this network, 192.168.1.0/24, create three sub networks that can cater for just enough for 30 hosts or 20 hosts and 10 hosts, three sub networks. Uh, so you might have extra, after you've done these three, the three sub networks, you might have extra IP address uh, you can be a create to use to create another sub networks. Uh, so how to do this? Uh? So each sub networks also means different networks. Each sub network will have its own network address and broadcast address. Let's see. 192.168.1.0 slash 24. This is the network you get. You need to create sub network from this. Okay. So, so there are three networks you need to do eh? 30 hosts, 20 hosts, and 10 hosts. 30 hosts. Say I give you a network A, 30 hosts. B, 20 hosts. C, 10 hosts. So, I purposely uh, uh, arrange it in from the descending. Eh? Always start because this is the this is the principle you need to follow. When you're doing VLSM, you always start from the biggest host, eh? the network with the biggest number of hosts. 30, then 20, and then the last is a list. Okay, 10. Okay. Hmm. So start with 192.168.1.0. Okay. So this is the first IP. So means this, this is the network address. But how many subnet must? What is the subnet must? I mean how you can also maybe I should ask how many host bit you need huh, to cater for 30 hosts. Okay. So the formula is Okay, two power n. Okay, two power n greater or equal to um, the requirement. Okay, thirty hosts plus two. Hmm. Okay, can you, can you get this? Why why I plus two? Because in one network, in this network. I want to I want to create the sub network I want to create is I need 30 usable IP. 30 usable IP. Okay. But each network must include with one network address and one broadcast address. So I include two plus two. So total I need 32 IP address. So this is the number of host bits. So two power what can greater or equal to 32. So the answer is 5. Okay, so 5. Huh? So I need 5 whole speeds. Whole speed is equal to 5 mean network bits. Network B is equal to how many bits? 32 minus 5. Because total IP address is 32 bits. So minus 5, you get 27 bits. So the network bits is 27. So now you get this. Okay. So you are slash 27. So now I get my network address. Hmm. 
So for broadcast address, how do I, how I get this? Huh? Say 192.168. Maybe, okay, dot one dot what? Huh? So the first, I know that the first 24 bit must, will be the same, but this is part of the network bits. So the last, okay, until where, until where is my network bits, huh? is, let's see, I convert to uh, binary, the last 8 bit, uh, I convert to binary. So 24, 25, 26, 27. You also can say the last five bits is the host bit. The rest, this three bit is the network bits. So, the network bits is this. So, I convert all my host bit to one. Just convert to one. So, this is my, uh, so my broadcast address. So, this one I convert to, like to decimal is, how much is this? This is mm, 31. Okay, this is 31. So this is my broadcast address. Okay. So usable, usable host is always 30, 32 minus 2. Okay, how do you get uh, 30 IP address range? Uh, Usable IP range 192.168.1.1. Just take the network address plus one and until 192.168.1. Your broadcast address minus one 31 minus one 30. Ah, okay, so. After that, broadcast address is this. Next IP, 192.168.1.32. So this is the network address for my next subnet for 20 hosts. So again, for 20 hosts, 2 power n greater or equal to 20 plus 2, 22. So, n equal to, still, still the same, huh? 5. Huh? So again, never bits is 32. So you know that uh, never bits 32 minus 5, still 27. So never bits still 27, just copy, okay, slash 27. And then broadcast address, you get. 192.168.1. Okay, here, here you need, you need to be careful. Eh? You convert the 32 to binary first. Eh? 32 to binary is 0010000. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, 27. So you be careful. Eh? 24 bits, 25, 26, 27. Okay, so. 001 is part of the network bit, so you must not change this. So the last five bits, still the host bit. Change your host bit to one. Okay, this one convert back to decimal. This is 63. Uh, so this is your broadcast address. New server IP range. So 192.168.1. Uh, network address 32 plus 133. So I'm uh, 192.168.1. Broadcast address 63 minus 1, 62. Okay. So next, the next address is 192.168.1. 64. So, and 2 power n greater or equal to how many hosts you need? 10 hosts. 10 plus 2, 12. 
so and you go to three four four is enough three not enough four is greater but enough huh? so it means the whole speed is four bit four bit whole speed means your now B is 28 bits because 32 minus 28 network address. So you get your network address, broadcast address 192.168.1. Okay, 64 is 0100000. Okay, 24 bits, network bits. Okay, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. This is your network bits, must not change. So the last four bits is your whole speed, change to one. So this one, convert. Convert back to decimal, how much? Sixty-four plus fifteen, seventy-nine. So this is your broadcast address. So user by the range. One nine two dot one six eight dot one dot sixty-four plus one sixty-five. The one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot seventy-nine minus one. 78. So this is a user IP range. So now the next one is 192.168.1.79 until 192.168.1.255. Let's say 255. Huh? Okay. You said that you have create you have already created three sub network. Huh? From this network, 192.168.1.0. So you still have IP address 79 uh, until 255 can be used uh, to create more sub networks. Okay, so you, you need to know how to do this because this will definitely will ask inside the exam. Huh? Maybe one question or two questions. Okay. So let me give you another question. Huh? 192.168.1.0 slash 24. So if I want you to create, create eight subnets, eight subnets from this network, okay, create eight subnets. Okay. So, So what is the prefix or what is the subnet mask? Slash what? Slash what? Yeah? Prefix. And then I say what is the subnet mask? I say what is the subnet mask? Huh? What is the subnet mask? Subnet mask. So, can you answer me? If I take this, huh? 192.168.1.0 slash 24, I want you to create eight subnets from this. Or I should say subnetwork. Subnetwork. Can you get me the answer? What is the 
subnet mask uh, you can use. Means all the subnet uh, have equal IP range, uh, user IP range. Means that you divide this network into eight equally same uh, size subnetworks. How do you do this? Okay, let me show you uh, 192.168.1. This, because this already start with slash 24, so means always must not change this. Uh. Okay, start from this. Okay, so means that you need to borrow. Uh. I want to create some networks, means that I need to convert some of the host bit into network bits. Zero, 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 zero. So, I want to create eight subnetworks. So, how many bits I need to have eight numbers? Okay, let me see. Eh? Let me show the formula is two power n equal to eight. Okay, no need minus two eh? because we now we are now calculate. How many neural bits you have to do in order to create eight subnetworks? So n equal to three. Three, huh? Exactly three. So we need to borrow one, two, three to become the uh, network bits. Okay. So it means one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot zero 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 okay so zero 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 slash twenty four plus three twenty seven so this is my uh network sub my network network address huh, for my first sub network so this broadcast this is network address so my broadcast is 192.168.1.000 one zero 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 one one okay so this is zero this is mm, 31. Okay, so before this, uh, let me change it back to this. Okay, so you see, uh, this is a level bit. Uh, so it means you can see uh, the next one, uh, level address. 192.168, no change, huh? Dot one, dot how many? Here, zero, 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 plus one. Zero, zero, one. Behind, all oh, zero. Say, broadcast address, 192.168.1.001, one, dot zero, zero, one, zero, please, no. One, 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 one. Next one, network address. One nine two dot one six eight dot one dot zero. Yeah, here again. Uh, zero zero one plus one. Zero one zero. Post be all zero. One nine two one six eight dot one dot. Zero one zero one 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 slash so these are three I created three network uh, three equally size network uh. okay so if I yeah, know the next one should be the same uh. so
So 0, 1, 0, plus 1. That's all. So uh, 0, 1, 1, plus 1 is 1, 0, 0. Next. So plus 1, plus 1. How many are you? One, two, three, four, five, six, two more. So zero, one, zero, one, plus one, 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 zero. One more. Plus one, 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 zero, plus one, 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 one. So these are the eight sub networks. I can create using three bits. Three bits. Okay. So next one. We uh, uh, this is a classless interdomain routing C I D R. So this is actually the summarized uh, of. You can see, this is 10.24.0.0 slash 24. 10.24.1.0 slash 24, this dot two, dot three. Means that the first three bits, uh, no, the first 24 bits is the network bits. All these three are different network bits. Means that four different LAN, four different sub networks. Uh, so it's really great. You can summarize this uh, into this 10.24.0.0 slash 22. You can summarize this four into one. So how do you summarize this? Okay. We start from 10.24.0.0. Slash 24, 10.24.1.0 slash 24, 10.24.2.0 slash 24, 10.24.3.0 slash 24. So, what do we? So, you compare all the bits, eh? all the same, the bits that are the same, you remain. Okay, so the first 16 bit confirm is the same, so we just copy down 10.24. But and the last also the same, huh? dot zero, dot zero, dot zero, dot zero. so don't care. Huh? We just care about what are the same from the first one, start from the first bit. Okay, and here you know that the difference are here, so we convert this to binary. So you compare these four bits, huh? it's still the same. Huh? So until what? So 16, 16 bit, 20 bit, 20 bit, 21, 22. Uh, until here. So until here only. The bit are the same. Okay, so all the zero remain, remain, remain. All the behind, they are different. Remain, ah, this remain. All behind, all are different one. All convert to zero. Don't care. Not zero. So how many bits is is the same? Only 20, the first 22 bit is the same. So you get this 10.24.0.0 slash 22. You also need to know how to do this. Eh? So this is the one 10.24.0.0 slash 22. The purpose of this summarization is okay, 
this is a router later we learn this uh, in this is a router the router if the router has four network behind four fiber network so this router in order to tell the router here maybe a router here okay you need to tell me tell this router okay you need to tell this router i got these four network behind me so this router okay will record four entries huh? one two three four there are four networks you want to go to these four networks what happened i need to go to this neighbor send everything to this neighbor but what i decide my what i want to say is inside this router uh, routing table record is you record four entries four networks mean it will consume some space huh? can i so instead of this and we can use CIDR to summarize into only one entry. So this router only need to record this one, one entry only. Then you know that if I want to go to 10.24.1.0, 10.24.1.0, then this uh, will match this. Uh, so send to this router, this router forward to this network. So later, when we're doing a uh, routing, uh, we will see this also. So next one, IP gateways. Again, uh, IP gateway is for hosts uh, from one network, 192.168.1.1, you can go to another network, dot two. Okay, so the gateway is actually, mostly is a router. Layer three, uh, mean a layer three device, a router. Okay, you can route packet uh, from one network to another network. So, so this you don't care. We don't more seeing this anymore because this is using a coaxial. So no more coaxial. No more seeing this anymore. Exam will also not asking about this. So now we come to this. Okay. Identifications, flags and fragment offsets. These are for the uh, fragmentations. Huh? So identification, flags and fragment offsets. So this is the packet. Sometimes, because when it's sending out, we don't know. This, the, the transmission uh, unit size huh, on this interface and this interface might be different. So. I re this router receive this size. So maybe at here need to chop down into three, three sides, huh? three small pieces. Uh, so you have to define, I, in each of these fragments, they put identification, maybe number one, number one, number one. Then host view receive, then you know that oh, these three pieces, huh? same identification belong to the same original packet. Okay, and then the flex means that I received the first one. The first one to show the flag one means that there are more fragments coming. The second one received, you also say more fragment is coming behind. So the last one will be flag will be zero, means no more fragment anymore. Okay. So then those we know that oh I received this one, no more fragment. Okay, done. So now I want to start to assemble this, huh? this three piece of fragment into back to the original packet. So according to the fragment offset, the first one is zero. Okay, the second one, maybe start with, um, uh, one, four, eight, zero. Ah. Okay, and then the next one, Maybe start with another one. Something bigger number. Mm, one five. Mm, Sixty. Ah, it can be. Eh? So it's just a number to tell to help the host eh, to help the receiving side eh, to identify which one. 
is the first, second, and the third piece. Then you can assemble it back to the correct sequence. Okay, next one is time to leave or TTL. Huh? For every packet, the maximum uh, time to leave is TTL huh? is 255 because TTL only has 8 bits. Huh? So the biggest number can be shown by 8 bits is 255. So what do you mean by is every packet being sent out by the router or the host, it may be 255. It just going to tell you for every send out 255, when pass through a router, it pass through different networks. Okay, it'll be minus one, become 254. I pass through another network, the packet, eh? minus one, become 253. Okay. So the purpose of this time to leave uh, is to prevent the packet from being uh, forwarding uh, in the network in finite year. How does, what does this mean? Okay, with this host uh, sent to this router, this router sent to this router, but this router don't know how to go, how to forward the router. Maybe it doesn't have this connection. It sent back to this router. This router sent back to this router. This router sent back. So the key on the loop. So there's the loop. Uh, so this is the loop. Okay. So if we don't have this time to leave, this packet uh, will be forwarded. Okay. Forward forever being looping inside the network non-stop. Uh. So if the the packet is permanently forever exists inside the network, you will consume the memory and the processing, CPU processing uh, of this, of the routers. Uh, so we don't want that. So we set a time to leave. So, so we can, when the router keep on forwarding, keep on forwarding, the, the time to leave, the TTL will keep on minus by one, minus, minus, minus until zero, then the router will discard the packets. Uh, so, so that's the purpose uh, of time to leave. But in, uh, in frame, let's say the darling layer frame, uh, we don't have time to leave. Uh, so the frame uh, actually will be keep on forwarding if there's a loop happening inside the broadcast network, inside the uh, LAN. So we have another technology, you still remember we call it SDP, Spanning Tree Protocol. I think tomorrow or Wednesday we talk about this. And we, we know, uh, we learn how to configure the SDP. To we learn how the what's the principle of the SCP to prevent the loops. So this is time to leave. Time to leave. You okay, can see from me if I pin one dot one dot one dot one, you can see the TTL fifty eight is uh, my time to leave. Huh? Means this packet uh, reply from the the ping reply from the one 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 one. Uh, this is a TTL fifty eight. Maybe it doesn't start with 255. I'm not sure what number. Because when I send out, when the host send out, it not necessarily must be 255. You can set this. Maybe one also can, two also can, three also can. Let's say here I ping one dot one dot one dot one. Let's see, I minus time to leave is minus i. Okay, minus i, I set a time to leave to what? Ah, you can see that. I have to ping this, huh? this 202184.192.1. Okay, this, this router, this gateway, reply me because he cannot further to forward the packet anymore because the time to leave, he received, he minus one becomes zero, so he cannot send out anymore. So he dropped the packet. So he sent a reply to tell me the packet is being dropped because TTL expired in the transit. So we we'll learn this again uh, tomorrow when you look at the ICMP. Yeah? Okay, next one, last one already. Yeah? The protocol, protocol numbers. Okay, it's, this is to show that who is the what is the next header. It can be ICMP, it can be TCP, it can be UDP, either. Means that 
who should I pass this data to? Pass to TCP, pass to UDP, or pass to ICMP for the next processing. Okay, protocol number. So if ICMP protocol number is one, TCP is seven, no, it's six, sorry. UDP is 17. So OSPF is 89, GRE is 47. Hmm. Yes. So this uh, 47. So you need to remember all this. Huh? This five protocol number is always coming out in the exam. Okay. But these are uh, these five protocol number I already include inside the Excel sheet and the training for for the ref inside the reference uh, keyword reference. So this protocol. So last but not least, the source IP address and the destination IP address. So what is the IP subnet mask used for? Is to identify the network bits. So that so the, the PC itself, uh, it can identify his own network address, network bits. So example for my IP config. So for my PC, for my laptop, my IP address I get is ten dot one dot one dot eighty six. My subnet mask is two five five dot two five five dot zero. Means that my network address is ten dot one dot one dot zero. How do I know this? Huh? I will do route three minus four, so I can know that. Oh, I can see this. Huh? Ten dot one dot one dot zero. Two five five dot two five five dot two five dot zero. So. I'm inside this network. I did. I just set the uh, because I just need to set the IP address and the subnet mask. The PC will auto automatically calculate this. Uh, you know this. Oh, I'm inside this network. This is the subnet mask. Okay. So what is the purpose of TTL field in the IP header? Again, to prevent the the packet from folding in the networks in finitely. Okay. So how are gateways are used in the IP network? So gateway are used by the host uh, to access to send data uh, to different network. Just like your house, your, you have a gate. Now you want to go out, you want to send something outside. So you must pass through the gate, uh, go to the gate first. Okay. Okay. So it's uh. So we still have uh fifteen minutes for today. So, so we just uh do some questions. I give you some questions. We try to do it now. So, okay, just some some questions. Huh? You can do it for practice the exam. <laughs> okay. This just a just like a uh, exam question for for you to practice. Huh? So please try to answer this, everyone. Please uh, type join this. Huh? Join this uh questions and sessions, please. Okay, so start from the first one. Question one, which of the following layer are not included in the TCP IPv4 model or TCP IP model? Which one, which layer is not included? Mm -hmm. 
session layer. Select one or more, uh, A and C. Okay. Select one or more. Huh? This is a uh, multiple choice questions. Which of the following layers are not included in the TCP IP model? Yes, okay, A and D. This is the answer, A and D. Okay, second question. Question two, which of the following technologies is used by the shared media network to forward data? Okay, question two, anyone can answer? D, correct, CSMACD, carrier sense, multi-access, collision, detection. Okay, number three, what is the length of the Ethernet 2 frame that contains the Ethernet header? Select one. What is the size? Range from how much to how much? Okay, correct. Also D. So how to get this? Huh? Actually, I already prepared a slide here for you. So this one, frame size. Okay, look at the question again. Length of the Ethernet to frame that contain the Ethernet header. So these are the header. This is optional. So we don't consider this. Huh? So this. In the frame check sequence. The data, the data can be sized from 46 until 1500. So you just add 6 plus 6 plus 2 plus 4 is 18. So 46 plus 18, 64. 1500 plus 18, 1518. So it's 64 until 1518. Okay. So 64 and then 1518 bytes. So question four. Question four, you need to do the STP, then only we can answer. Because now you don't know this one frame type. Mm. So I can try to answer anyone who know this. Select one or more. So I think I can I think we can skip the number four first, huh? So we go for the number five. Okay. Number four when we after we learn the STP, then we come back. Okay. Number five, which of the following is not the working principle of CSMACD? Select one. One answer me. It's not the working principle. Resending after random delay. 
Any other answer? Okay, so resending after a random delay or resending after a fixed delay. Listening while sending. Which of the following is not uh, the working principle of CSMACD? Select one. Select one means one is one is the not is not the working principle. Means the other four, the other four is the correct, is the working principle. C listening while sending. Is this wrong? What is this? Set the random timer. This means resending after random delay. So it means that this is wrong. This is not the working principle of CSMACD. Listening before sending, yes, we know. Listen, if the network is quiet, we can send. Listening while sending. You need to still listening while sending because you need to detect if there is a collision, I can send suspension upon collision. And then every, everyone start the random timer. This is a random delay. After I finish countdown, I resend. Okay. So next one. Number six, if a 10 gig port optical module is used to connect two Huawei S5710 switches by default, the interconnected interface work in full duplex mode. A true, huh? hmm. fiber, actually, fiber, huh? optical fiber always. Full duplex. Okay. Right. Okay, number seven. Which of the following MAC addresses cannot be used as the MAC addresses of host network adapters? Select one or more. Cannot be used. Which one cannot be used? Hmm. What do you mean by cannot be used? Huh? Hmm. Cannot be used is because it may be a broadcast MAC address or it's a multicast MAC address. Uh, so how will I identify which one is multicast MAC address? Which one is broadcast address? Okay, so what is a, let's say, what is a unicast? Unicast MAC address. So C, C is a, cannot be used, correct. Eh? C is a multicast MAC address because the bit number A, this is 0, 0, 0, 0. This is 0, 0, 0, 1. The bit number A is 1. So this is a, Multicast MAC address cannot be used as a MAC address of host network adapter. So, any more? Any more answer? Or, or just C is the answer? Any more answer?
Okay. Uh, a is also a multicast matrix. Why? Okay. The first one. This is turn this to binary zero 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 zero. The three is zero zero one one. So the bit number eight is also one. So this is also a multicast MAC address. Cannot be used as a host MAC address. For this, this is 0, 0, 1, 0. This is 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, this two is okay. So next, if the value of the type or length field of an Ethernet data frame is 800, 0, 0, the length range of the upper layer packet header carried by the data frame is from 20 byte to 60 bytes. So in Ethernet frame, the type show 800 means that the next header, the size of the next header is 20 byte to 60 byte. Oh, so what is this means? 800 represent what? True or false? What is 800? IP, correct, IP. So, so the second statement means that the length range of the upper layer packet header carried by the data frame is 20 to 60 bytes. Means that IP header is 20 byte to 60 byte. Is this true or false? Okay, if you have any questions, you can unmute your mic to ask. Or you can post into the WhatsApp group. Okay, the answer is true. Okay. The answer is true. Let me show you this one. IP header is 20 to 60 bytes. At least 20 bytes. At most, 60 bytes. Okay. So next one, when the header length of an IPv4 data packet is 20 bytes, and the total length is 1,500 bytes, what is the valid payload of the packets? So I, I have a packet. That's the packet on here. The header is 20 byte. The total length means including the header, everything is 1500 byte. So what is the valid payload of the packet? Okay, select one. Oh, A, correct. One, four, eight, zero. Thus, use the 1,500 byte minus 20 byte. One, four, eight, zero bytes. So, what is the value range of the DSCP field in an IPv4 header? Select one. Value range of the DSCP, DSCP field. In the header. Question 10.
Very good. Not sure. Let me show you. Huh? So this is the DSCP. Uh, huh? Differentiated services code point. DSCP field. How many bits you have? Zero, 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 six bits. So how many number you can show is six bits? Two power six is 64, means zero until 63. Yes, 64 numbers are here. Okay. So next one, a gateway must be configured for communication between the host and other hosts. Is it a must? Configure for communication between the host and other hosts? True or false? B. False. Correct. Okay, if you just want to communication between hosts inside the network, same network, you no need a gateway. So, mass is a wrong. Huh? So, which of the following fields is not included in the format of the network layer packet header? In the IP header, it means network layer packet header means the IP header. Which one you didn't see? Select one. Which field you did not see in the IP header? B, are you sure? Ah, answer is C. You didn't see the sequence number. Destination IP address, source IP address you have. PTL, again. PTL, time to leave. And you didn't see any sequence number in here. Okay. So again, which of the following IPv4 address cannot be used by a host to access the internet without net? Ah, cannot be used by a host to access internet without net. So remember, I explained what is net. Net is to configure to translate private address to public address. So right here, which one is cannot be used means private address. Which one is a private address? All right. This is the private address. This is a class A private address. Okay, so we try few more. Okay, we do until the fifteen. Two more questions, then we stop for the day. So, if the network address administrator assigned the IPv4 address 192.168.1.1 slash 28 to a host on the network. How many hosts can be added to the network where the host resides? B. Are you sure? Okay, you remember, there's already one host uh, inside the network. How many hosts can be added when there's a host, one host already inside the network? Yes, answer is B. Okay. Of course, you get 14 because you use the 
the post speed is 4. So you 2 power 4, you get 16. 16 minus 2, you get 14. So this network has 14 usable IP address. But the first statement here already said, one IP address already assigned. So you left 13 IP address to be assigned. Means that only 13 hosts can be added to the network. Because we add the host reside, means the host already inside. Okay. So if a network's address is 192.168.1.0, the broadcast address of the network is 192.168.1.255. Okay, true. Let me check. Mm. Okay, how about that? Do this one also. Last one. One five zero dot two five dot zero dot zero is a network segment. Okay, this is a network address. And its mass is, Sunday mass is 255.255.224.0. Which of the following are valid host address? Select one or more. Okay, last question for today. A and D. A. B. Is it? Look closely. Is it A is correct or not? You see, a two five five dot two five five means first two must follow one five zero dot two five. A is one five zero dot one five. This is definitely wrong. So, 150 150.25, 150.25, These three are possible. It means that, depend on this. Subnet mass. So, how, how many bits is here for... Hmm. All right, A is not in the network. So I, I, the answer asking for which IP are inside the network. So D is inside the network. One five zero two five dot zero dot zero two five five dot two five five dot two two four dot zero. Okay, you know that one five zero dot two five is mass. Follow. So two two four. Why is two two four? One 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 zero. So means that
These are the network beads. So, D is, this is D, so possible, okay? So this is C, C.255, okay? So these are the number bits, okay? It's possible. So what about B? Is B okay or not? B? B is 150. Zero. Zero, zero. You are correct. So, all host bit are zero. B is the uh, network address. So, I say C and D. Okay. So I think that's all for today. Uh, so today we have been through the transmission media. We learn about the, what is the UTP cable, what is the fiber optic cable, and then we learn about the internet framing, the OSI seven layers, okay? A TCP IP model, and we learn, we learn about the MAC address, okay? Internet header, MAC address, and then IP address uh, for today. Okay, IP address. So, thing. So tomorrow, tomorrow we we'll go into. Um, ICMP and ARP, and also TLP transport layer protocols. Maybe go finish a data phoning scenario. Maybe we'll touch a little bit on the VRP foundations also VRP huh? okay mm. Mm. so I think that's all for today mm. yes okay so it's already Two and two and eleven p.m. in Nigeria. Okay, Richard. Any question from Richard? Uh, are we going to have um, the material for this uh, course? Because most of the time, my internet connection went off, so I couldn't really for the material of the the, the course material. The PDF files. Yes. Yeah, PDF files are probably the video recorded uh, video copy. So for the video, Jeff, uh, the Jeff is recording. Uh? Yeah. Hello, Richard. Already... Recording now. Okay. Hello. I'm recording now. And uh, for the material, uh, uh, the instructor you share in the yes. WhatsApp group, and uh, you can find the training material in the uh, opening email. The Rosani sent you. Okay. Okay. So that means you okay. better share, share email. Okay. I better share again this one. 